Lumos. Lumos. If I could undo all that happened that day, I would. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Lumos.
Lumos. Lumos. Lumos. Lumos. Lumos. Incendio. Confringo. 
Incendio! Confringo! Incendio! Lumos. Incendio. Good for you. Incendio. Lumos. Sometimes you can find some quite interesting things in the library.
Hey Trevor. Trevor. Mr. Silva. Hey. What's up? Not much. I was just kind of talking to Joe about the whole situation. <laughs> that Some douchebag didn't help him out when he got cut. Yeah. Well, you know what you got? Well, me and Joe know what we got to do. I, I, no I mercy. Was, like, no I was, mercy. I was telling, I was, I was talking to him and he was like, uh, he, he was, I just asked him, hey Joe, does, does that make you upset at all that he pretty much didn't even care that you got her? He was like, yeah, a little bit. I'm, I'm going to report tomorrow. I was like, okay, good. Yeah, he, he, that, that jack off cunt needs to get reported for yeah, his, that shit. Th this guy, Aiden, he told us about. He was like, he, like, didn't even care about him getting hurt. Hey, Austin. Hey, Austin. He's gone. Hold that thought, Jake. I'm gonna go take a piss. Okay. We were just talking about the whole situation that happened with Joe yesterday. Um, well, basically, he got injured at work. And, and, uh, I guess his co-worker, his, this guy, Aiden, uh, just didn't even care about him getting hurt. He just told him to just deal with it. I was like, what? I, 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 I don't know. Back. All right. As you were saying, Jake. Yeah, I was just I, I was just telling Bill and Austin what the story was. Yeah, that that really upsets me that he's treated that way at work. Like I'm. Mm. The, the uh, I don't think so. No, mm -hmm. I. Are you talking about the spell? Talking about the spell that? No, not yet. No. I'm working on side stuff. Or if Joe worked on any of his injustice characters. Alright, yeah. I don't care what the. Damn, my phone is so cheating, huh? I gotta get that song out of my system. Uh. Robot health and Futurama. Yeah, yeah, Aiden's not his boss, guys. He, he's just another co worker. The fuck are you? Yeah, uh. Ironic pun, actually. So, all your sins been done for each one with apparent agonizing and ironic punishment. Gentlemen, I'm about. Oh, he's gonna do it for me. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. He's got another one of robot hands. He's running, so he's cheating. He's running, so he's cheating. He's running, so he's cheating. Hello? Where's she here? Okay, good. Probably got cut off for a minute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh... 
the Haunted Mansion trailer, man. Oh, yeah. Looks interesting. The main, the, like, the, the, the cat, and I listed the cast. Oh, uh, besides Sure Level being in it, it's a pretty stat cast. Yeah. I'm too so hard. But, but Sure Level being in it is a little bit of a downside. Don't blame you. Obviously, Jared Leto is a shitty actor, so. A shitty vampire, joker looking, wannabe looking motherfucker. My ass is supposed to from the slide. Dancing cock, dancing cock fights. I'm thinking in decent places. I'm trying to ruin your card. I'm in the electric slide. So quickly, the end of time. Robot Hell! Oh Robot Hell from... From, uh... Me and, uh... Me and Chris, the other day, we were listening to a bunch of, um... Cartoon and anime intros during work. Yeah. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Yes. Where the fuck do you think that fucking Jar Jar picture came from? Really? That's what, oh my god. Where so, the fuck do you think that Jar Jar picture came from? So, so uh, Trevor, I was, uh, earlier I looked at the cast. Oh my gosh, the cast is stacked. Beso of course the size Jar Jar. Of course the size Jar Jar. Jar Jar. I'll be right back. I'm gonna grab some water. I'm just going to Hogwarts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh... Yeah, there's, uh, like... Uh, Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. Owen Wilson. Wilson. Jamie Lee Curtis. Curtis. Tiffany Haddish. Haddish. Ryan Gosling. Rosario Dawson. And, R R and Renata Ryder. I oh, was man. like, damn. damn. That is a stacked cast. Besides, Besides, of course. Of course. Yep. Yep. <laughs> really? <laughs> you <laughs> like Rosario <laughs> <Zion> Dawson, huh? <laughs> 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 Rosario Dawson. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and also she's a. Uh, Ahsoka, let's not forget that. Oh shit, I forgot there was one happy birthday. Yeah, today I asked Vinny... Oh, it's a little... Um, he does work early tomorrow, so I don't wanna... Anyways, as I was saying, when I sent that picture, guys, I said, Congratulations, Vinny, you just lit a fire into everyone's ass. And he said, in the chat group, and he said, Kinky. And then I said, That's an understatement. It's not my fault you have a Jar Jar fetish. It's <laughs> oh. Damn, okay. <laughs> um, hold on, let me look back. Is he coming on tonight? After he gets home from work. I I, 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 I was a little confused because earlier today he was like, I'm not working today, but now it turns out he is, so. Alright, let me look. Okay. So, long story short, there's a 17 year old kid. Who has the same rank as me named Aiden, but he thinks he's everyone's boss, including people that are the same rank as him. So, last night I cut my hand on a box. Oh, he cut his hand on a box, it says. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, so probably... Hmm... Put his hand on the box. Okay. And I was bleeding, so I went to a manager and he said to get someone to change. Jump with. But when I went to with Aiden to change jobs, he said everyone's jobs are done, you need to do it. And even though I had a bandaid on, he didn't believe that, he wouldn't believe me that I had gotten hurt. I told him I couldn't take the second load of trash down because I felt like I was going to pass a fall or pass out. So on my way out to do the second load of trash, I fell and bumped my arm on the trash whale. Mm. Yeah, it sounds pretty bad. So the way this guy did it, Well, I definitely got some tricks that Joe's not going to love. I'll be back. Like I said, I'm going to get that water. Okay, okay. Lumos. Really? Uh, like the moment I saw Danny DeVito in that trailer, I was just like, is that fucking Danny DeVito? <laughs> I couldn't believe we saw him. I was like, Danny DeVito in a Disney movie? Okay. Well, Danny DeVito is no stranger to Disney movies, I don't think. Yeah, I know. I mean, he did play Phil in Hercules, so. Obviously, you know that. I mean, I, I, I already knew that. Who's the one of business here, bro? Ha! Gotcha, bitch! Damn, bitch, be humble. Damn. I mean, I from mean, the way it sounds, it sounds like Aiden didn't know that he got injured. Like, he didn't believe that he got injured. Well, maybe Aiden really is a douchebag and needs to get put in his fucking place. Yeah, maybe. I didn't yeah. even knew that Aiden got, knew that Joe got hurt and he didn't give a fuck. Kind of, I could tell douchebags like that, you know. But my fear is that his job won't do anything about it and just let him off with a slap on the wrist. If that's the case, I think it's time for Joe to find something else. I mean, I, agree. He, I mean, he's been talking about ever since that night of Ant-Man. Louis saw Ant-Man that he's thinking about doing it.
Oh, we get ready for. Oh. Okay. So the last day of February, we did, we did um first one sometime in March. We'll do the second one. I think the second think one the is, second the, worst is one. the worst one. In my opinion. In my opinion. Come just joke it off. Uh, let me ask him. So now he probably wants. So now he probably wants to discuss um. Discuss Sunday with me. So. Well, I do have something to say, guys. Um, okay. Okay. As you guys, um... Thing is, guys, um... When I bought the ticket for sale, my mom got a little pissed. That, um... My mom and dad both got pissed that I was... They paid 80 bucks, and nobody then loved me. You know, like... Like, my mom and... Mom and dad are making me, like, uh... Or, should I say, like... Basically, in the near future, if y'all are confirmed to come to, if we're confirmed to be going to a movie together, um, maybe them will cash up me tickets before I buy them, given the fact that, you know, they weren't too happy about the 80 bucks that came out of my account out of nowhere. Okay. All right. Yeah, I got a little bit pissed off because they thought, you know, I wouldn't. Joe says he's off around the lip. Oh, the natural hot game is going to go to bad hot rate. Fuck. Yeah. I haven't bought any tickets yet because, um, nobody then know to cash at me yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because my mom and dad says I can't be buying tickets for anyone unless they then know to cash at me before I do. Can't wait. Yeah. We just got a race today. Patient, I know everybody's oh, good oh. for it. <sighs> no, uh, uh, no, nobody, uh, nobody's been money yet. 
Um, me, Joe, me, Caitlin, Joe, um, let me check. Uh, pictures. Also, but apparently I might have to get a refund for them because I kind of bought them for the wrong time. Oh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six tickets. Probably me. It's me, Joe, me, Caitlin, Joe, Jacob, Ella, and Chris. Okay, so, yeah, that's six. No, you don't owe me money at the moment, no. Okay. They're seeing it Sunday, I think. Or some sometime Sunday. I'm not sure exactly, but they're seeing it Sunday. I don't know what I'm gonna plan on seeing it. I I I decided I didn't really want to go Sunday, so. How come? Oh, I'm just. I don't know. I'm I'm thinking probably just gonna be. I'm probably gonna be tired for a night tournament, so I might want to be home and relax. I'm probably gonna be pretty tired for my tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I did, and I got in trouble by the uh, <laughs> teacher. You got in trouble by a teacher in the Hogwarts Legacy? Yeah. Rebellion. Because because. Because, uh, they, they, they were pretty mad, but they, they weren't that mad. It, the reason why they were mad, uh, uh, Trevor was because I went into their office and they said I can only get one thing and then some, some another student asked me to get something else from the, out of the office, and I did. I don't know. I'm probably, I'm guessing probably, I'm, I'm guessing probably either way it would. Like, even if you choose not to get the uh, feather, he's probably not going to, uh, the student's probably not going to trust you. If you, if, if you do get the feather, the teacher's not going to trust you. Yeah. I mean, either way, I think either either choice would impact the game, like... In my opinion. Like... Like, like I, 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 I don't know, because I didn't... Choose to not get the feather, but I'm assuming that if you choose not to get the feather, the student's probably gonna be, not trust you. Probably.
Okay. What are you up to now? Crossed Wands was so much fun, wasn't <clears> it? <throat> Yeah. Uh, do whatever you want, man. Do whatever you want. And, uh, Trevor, Trevor. Yeah. just remember, when you do get the, uh, John Wick 4, uh, tickets, Oh, you're uh, all made it from paying. Hey, oh, what? You're all made it from paying, because it's your birthday. Oh, I'm, I, I just thought I would say, uh, I was, for Friday. Yeah, I would rather go for I would rather go Friday. Nothing against Thursday night showings. I would just rather go on my actual birthday. No worries. I'd rather spend my birthday with you guys. Sounds legit. Mm -hmm. 
It's me, Gareth. Do you have a moment? Okay. And I can't wait for uh, Scream 6 next week. I might be a little late seeing it just because I really want to go with my sister and Matt and uh, they got Stella, they got Stella next weekend so it's going to be a little tough to see it with her around. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was kind of hoping that I could go maybe Thursday night before she comes Friday, but um, the thing is, I'm working Thursday night. I want to go with Amber. I know my friend, my friend Corey invited me And I'll, and I'll give this new Haunted Mansion movie this. This one looks a lot more scarier than the first one. Yeah. And I was surprised to see that it was actually getting a theater release. I thought this was supposed to be a Disney Plus exclusive. <sighs> So I was surprised, so I was surprised to, to see that it's getting a theater release. But I'm glad it's getting a theater release because I want to see that movie in theaters. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. And Stock was in the call earlier, talking to me about the that that Han Manson trailer, and he was like, "Why not just do a sequel to the first one?" I'm like, "Well, the thing is, the first one wasn't very well received with people, so they don't want to do a, do another one of those. It's me. They just they they just chose to do a reboot." Which I get it because, yeah, the first one was not, not did not get good reviews at all. I didn't mind the first one, but it got terrible reviews. Like, let me see. Tried to summon the pepper and dropped the pudding into our prefect's lap. Don't talk to me about humiliation. My broom went up like a bit of flint the other day. In Transfiguration, I switched the writing ink with fobberworm makers. I thought it'd be funny, and it was. To me. I was a late bloomer. I thought I was going to be a squib. Family still tease me about it. And a 14% critic rating and a 31% audience rating. Not good at all. Handy resource indeed, your field guide. 
And I heard something about, about the ride at Disney being closed, so I'm just assuming that it's probably getting upgraded from this new movie. It's most likely getting upgrades for this new movie. Shit! Son of a bitch! Who's pissing you off over there? Over there. What do you know what, son? Oh, really? <laughs> I'm excited for Scream 6, but I'm also a little nervous for it, because I just don't like the, the fact that this, they're, they're going like a full-blown horror movie route instead of a spoof on horror movies, which it, that franchise is known for. But hey, I'm gonna see this movie just for Jenna Ortega. Cause I love Tenor Kaya. You sipping for? I mean... <laughs> Austin, how old is she? <laughs> she is. To you or... Wait, is she really? Hold up. Jenna... <laughs> yeah, I <treat> her well. <laughs> so what college do you go to, Jenna? Oh, you're in high school? Could have fooled me. September twenty seventh, two thousand two is her birthday. Oh god! <laughs> yeah, here we go. We, her birthday is September, September 27, 2002. So yeah, she's 20. She, she'll be 21 later this year. <laughs> well, I don't... So I don't know if that'll... 
Bro, how did she? That's not gonna happen in court, Austin. <laughs> That's not gonna hold up in court. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Charlie, don't say Nick. Of course you did. <laughs> I have to. I watched episode 2, Jay. It really gets tough. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. You're only on episode 2? <laughs> You- you're only on episode 3. B bitch, I finished it! <laughs> Crap, man! Your sister sure did! <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, I was quoting from. No, no, I was quoting from a. Uh, uh, winning the Piston Cup could save this whole town, and I can't race because of one bad date. This is a witch hunt, Your Honor. <laughs> I was like, I was about to say, damn, turn it right to Annika, huh? Or oh, Annika, Annika, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Austin, what the hell? Hey, <laughs> crap, man! Your sister sure did! Oh, she did. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Nightmare McQueen said that in a. Or, no, no, Owen Wilson said that in a. Car, in the Cars 4 sketch. Austin, have you seen that? <laughs> Oh, the Saturday Night Live sketch, uh, Cars 4. Watch it. <laughs> yeah, uh... And I saw that the ride, the Haunted Mansion ride at Disney is, is shut down right now as well, so... I'm just assuming that this ride, that Han Man to ride at Disney, is going to get some upgrades with this new movie. <laughs> it's most likely. Yeah. I'm not 100% positive on that, but... It's, it's a possibility. Like, damn, I won't watch that trailer again because that was a good trailer. Uh... Let me see. The Holy Mansion. I got it. Oh, this is so good. Well, we'll see. Yep, there's all moving. There's all um, there's there that all fuck. Fuck him. Such a great song play for this trailer as well. Danny DeVito. Yeah, they're already dead. 
<laughs> They're gonna be better. <laughs> oh man, love that line. They're gonna be. They're already dead, almost, and they're going to be deader. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, I'll see that movie just for... Just for... Just because I love almost and... Also, that poster that came out today that I sent was pretty cool too. I love the I love the first official poster as well. That was awesome. Sure. With all of them just standing on the staircase. I actually saw the poster before I saw the trailer. Like I, I, I was on social media and saw the tr saw the poster, and then I immediately saw Danny DeVito at the very bottom of the stairwell. And then I saw almost on the stairwell as well, and I was like, "Well, shit." Transfiguration. Yeah. I did. I, yeah, I'm sure you do, man. What? Okay. I've always said that travel broadens the mind. Someone was sat by the fire. That's funny. I wish the headmaster had something in there. I we just know it. It's <laughs> awesome. Rebellion. Austin. That's <laughs> 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 I was gonna tell you to watch the sketch that I sent. 
because, oh god, the poorly drawn concept art for it just makes it funnier. Poorly drawn concept. <laughs> God, the, the poorly drawn concept of that car's first sketch just makes it funnier. Oh, I think I've seen that. I think you sent that to us before. Yeah. Betrayal of a loved character that I don't want any part of. Okay, well, come on, this thing's not doing Yeah. She's doing good. <laughs> She's like. Hey. Yeah? Uh, uh, Austin, you can't be asking about his mom all the time now because you got Lucy now. Go up, man! Your sister sure did! Oh, <laughs> damn! Oh, damn! Go up, man! <laughs> God. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, she did move out of the house, Austin. <laughs> unlike Go some, on, uh, unlike, unlike, unlike somebody else who hasn't moved out yet. Lumos. Oh. <laughs> well, I, uh, Nora. What are you looking at? Yeah, good point. Yeah, good point. You got a good point. Samantha thinks I'm potty. But it's this painting. I never noticed it before. If I know Hogwarts and I Which we do. an empty frame doesn't appear for no reason. There's something more to this. We're made of vibranium. If I have the time, I may look. Could be intriguing. What? What's wrong? I've been racking my brains long enough. I hope you'll have better luck than I have. Do come and find me if you stumble on something illuminating that solves the mystery. Lumos. That spot must be a clue. <laughs> I should look around in case it's nearby. This looks like the location from the painting. What could be so special about it? I'm not entirely in agreement with you. How nice yeah. to see you, my young friend. I wish there was something. Oh, I love it. Rebellion. Lumos. <laughs> Let's get you back to your frame, little moth. The moth stopped. Perhaps I need to keep casting Lumos on it. Yeah. I knew there was a connection. I should tell the Nora that I solved the puzzle of that empty frame. Um I'm not sure I got look in the eye, I'm not sure.
Lenora, I solved the mystery of that painting. You did? How? I found the location depicted in the painting, and then I cast Lumos to guide a moth back to the frame. All very logical, I suppose. Pity I was so close to solving it. You have a knack for solving riddles. Natty's good at that, too. So is Meat, although he does tend to over-explain. Well, I'm glad someone figured it out. The moth! I should have seen that! Nice. What was the ministry thinking to do black in charge of a bunch of Just curious what my level is. Thirteen. Okay. I'm not sure. I forgot how far I am. Rebellion. Lumos. Revelio. Uh, I'm trying to remember out. I can't remember. <laughs> I just I just can't stop thinking about that line in that Hob Mansion trailer where one of the characters was like, "They're gonna at the end of the trailer where one of the characters was like, they're gonna they're already dead." And then old Wilson just old Wilson's character just says, "We're gonna they're gonna be deader." <laughs> oh man, I love that line so much right here. 
Hold on. Right here. It's coming up. It's coming up. <laughs> love it, love it. <clears throat> okay. Or another line I liked from the trailer was when the mom was talking to the son in the beginning of the trailer. Where the mom was talking about the house not being as warm as she as they hoped. So then she said, I'm just going to light up a vanilla candle and it's going to be, it's going to be a game changer. And the kid's like, will it though? <laughs> Wow, who's pissing you off over there? Superman, who? What a great trick, well. Don't want that kryptonite punch, bitch. You wanted to speak with me? I did. Hello. I'm Duncan Hobhouse. Pleasure to meet you. I've heard all about you, of course. Confronting trolls and dragons. That's nice to hear. I have had my share of adventure. 
I hope my reputation's warranted. I'm going to presume your reputation is, in fact, warranted. In which case, you are precisely the person I need. You see, we were learning to repel boggarts in Professor Hecate's class, and, well, mine unfortunately took the shape of a... a puff scheme. Well, they seem innocent, but their tongues can be most disturbing. Exactly. I wish more of our fellow students agreed with you. Regardless of how reasonable I believe my fear of puff schemes to be, I'm beginning to get a reputation as a coward. Some have even taken to calling me Puff Skeen Dunkeen. Not this time, Sorry, bitch! Words can be Not cruel. This time. Thank you. Poppy keeps offering Not to help me in overcoming my fear, but... I'm too afraid to take her up on it. Anyway, still there? to make matters worse, yep. I stupidly blurted okay. out that I must be brave than sure. people think, since I have been in the Hidden Herbology Corridor. The Hidden Herbology Corridor? Yes. Rumor has it that the Herbology Damn, the bitch be humble. Garlic kept dangerous plants there. It's supposedly so overrun now that no one dares enter it anymore. I was hoping you could go there and bring back evidence that I could use to show that... Well, I'd gone in. Say a bit of an exceptionally dangerous plant of some kind. Very well. If I'm in the area, perhaps I shall take a look. Grand. I'd very much appreciate it. Come and find me if you get the proof. I shall be forever in your debt. Hmm. Hidden herbology oh, corridor. Um... Sounds intriguing. I see you got a friend of me playing in the background. Wait, how did you know? I know my music. Well, you don't know the version it is. I'm playing a remix of it. Oh, you're playing a remix of it? Yes, yeah, so it's a fucking banger, bro. Which one? Yeah. I gotta say, two years for this one, man. This is a fucking banger. Yeah, uh, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a remix version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I bet <laughs> Damn. I made it that I'm way. Bad. I'm fine. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> really? Just <laughs> 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 A remix. I can't wait to begin. Oh, there's a remix? Oh, jeez. That and my This must be the entrance to the hidden herbology corridor. Sure. Devil's snare seems to thrive in darkness. Perhaps it doesn't care for light. Way back out of him. Doesn't matter. Doesn't look like that. Oh, okay. But you, but Jake can shoot too. Oh, damn it! Oh, 
Damn it. Jesus. What? What the fuck? What's wrong? Look with it. Devil's snare seems to thrive in darkness. Perhaps it doesn't care for light. Jesus. Oh. Imagine a piece of that enormous venomous tentacle. It would be enough for Duncan to prove his bravery. I'm almost scared to even listen to the to that song often. I don't know why I'm just. Mm. What yeah. happened? <laughs> Prove my bravery. Yet. Hello, Duncan. I have the proof you wanted. That's right. Must have been a giant venomous tentacular. It's even more than I expected. I knew you were the one to ask. I appreciate you getting it for me. Alright. Oh no, I'll, I'll I'll play it, I'll play it. I'll play it. You got me. Of course. I hope this helps you prove yourself. This is sure to put an end to Puff's in dunking for good when I show everyone in the common room tonight. This will show ever how ridiculous that nickname was. Thank you again, and have a good day. I know I will. Thank you for all of your help. Don't let Puff Skin Duncan for me. Oh yeah, that's definitely a uh, remix now. Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> It's wrong. I really have made a mess of things. Alright. I'm gonna listen to this song that Austin sent. See what No, I got it. I I got it here.
Purge are defending Hogsmeade against Purge. There you go. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, no. I, yeah, I get the point. Oh, why? I want to hear what uh, John Campy had to say about Super Mario Brothers moving up two days. It, it, it moved up from April 5th to April 3rd, I think it was. God. What's wrong? What's wrong? Yes, Kevin, uh, John Kennedy is saying that he thinks that Tim Marvel is going to be the number one box office, box office movie of the year. Do you doubt him? No, Tim Marvel Brothers. Well, do you doubt him though? I mean, it could be a good movie. No, so I don't know about number no. one, but you know. Yes, exactly. It's like I was going to see it 
now, and now I'm going to have to see it with my grandchildren, if you're a housewife. But yes, it, but, so no, it's not a huge thing, but it is something. It, it, it is something, and I think it's kind of an acknowledgement that there is a larger anticipation. Now look, I didn't look at the release date schedule. Jonathan, maybe you can look that up. Sure. But I don't know if they moved it a couple of days early to maybe avoid what might be coming out after that <laughs> or they giving it a few extra days just giving it a few extra days to have a little because you know a leap in the weekend you know what it, yeah. they actually i think it's because the original release date was good friday so i'm wondering if that's why yeah. that could be just to be just a couple days earlier, a couple days earlier. But, but here's the thing about that um did the pope recently put out a tweet saying they saying they good friday yes friday? yes Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I'm an Italian Catholic. You think I would have known that? No, I mean, the thing is, they've always known that that day was Good Friday. It's not like they woke up one day and said, wait a minute, wait, 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 shit. Did we schedule this thing to open on Good Friday? Like, they probably didn't know that day until so I was guessing. I'm I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Like they probably didn't know that. So I'm get. I mean, there's, there's nothing really. Joyland showing up, paint. Well, that's the Bob Ross uh, movie with Owen Wilson, but it's not like they're gonna be terrified no. of that. And, and that's yeah, yeah. So why, why two days? I don't know. You know what? It may just be an excuse to get them in the headlines again. Two day move doesn't really change. Doesn't really what? Whatever it is, I'm happy that we're gonna get to see it a little bit earlier than we thought. I am very excited. Very excited. I think the trailers have looked awesome. I still think now again. I reserve the right to change my mind once I've seen the movie. If the movie's not any good, it's not going to be the number one box office of the year. But if this movie's good, I've seen the passion for this property, and the fact that we haven't had a Nintendo movie since that, what was it, Bob Hoskins? In Super Mario Brothers? It's like, a been a while. It's a been a little while. And listen, I, I, and I tell you what, as... An Italian Canadian. <laughs> Damn. The guy whose actual name is Giovanni, son of Pasquale, son of the original Giovanni, uncles who are Sagarlo, Romolo, Vincenzo, and Carlo. My aunts are Pina, Leonora, and Maria. I can tell you this as an Italian Canadian, I'm very excited. Okay, Adam, you're doing a brick and you're depending on the fucking person. None of this rocky nonsense. Yeah. I want real Italian representation. Wow. Oh, wow, none of this rocky me, nonsense. Do you have a moment? Damn, Joe. What the fuck? <laughs> Did he really just say that? None of this rocky nonsense. Damn. None of this. Oh my god, hold on. As an Italian Canadian, I'm very excited to see some real, authentic Italian representation on screen. Yeah. None of this rocky nonsense. Yes. I want real Italian representation. Come on, Godfather. Ugh. Ugh, come on. Like, it's some real Italian representation. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about... Wow, Joe's gonna... If I tell Joe that he said that... Oh, dude, he can be livid. He's getting more livid than Mike Barnes. <laughs> You're going to court, you know that. It's not gonna hold up in court, you know that, right? It's not gonna hold up in court, nor will it hold up for the, uh... Hold up against Lucy. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Austin! I just figured. I, I just figured out how to get rid of your gear. Left analog stick. Hold. Oh, that's true. Maybe somewhere in. Maybe somewhere in. Uh, yeah, probably. That's what I was thinking. It's me, Gareth. Do you have a moment? Oh, please. Oh, Austin, did you ever watch that Carl's Force sketch I sent? 
Oh, he's still here. I just want to hear your reaction. And I think you're more, you'll be more pleased than Pinocchio. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screen record this and send it to Joe here. Hold on. Or send it to uh, the chat. Son of the original Giovanni. Uncle sure. Carlo I guess. But it's just, I wanted you to see the sketch and the sketches. That's the main reason. I wanted you to see the, like, poor concept art. It just makes it funnier. gonna be pissed when I send them it, when I send this to the chat. <laughs> this is some of the stuff. The concept art makes it funnier. Back off, Jack off. <laughs> <laughs> God, the concept art just makes it funnier. <laughs> oh, it's the this is just... It's better. Watch this. <laughs> Incendio. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> the concept art made it funnier. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> <I can bring her>. <laughs> 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 I agree, sir. I'm sorry, but still on. <laughs> Yeah, that was funny. Man, I can't <laughs> wait to see Joe's reaction to what I said. <laughs> did you watch that version, Jake? <laughs> I did. You, you, I sent it. Fuck, <laughs> man! Was... Calm down, jerk off! I don't. I didn't touch your daughter. She, she was coming on to me. <laughs> Calm down, jerk off. Back off, Jack! I wasn't looking at your wife! <laughs> Come on in, you're going to God! Grow like, up, man! Your sister sure did! <laughs> so what college do you girls go to? <laughs> oh, you're in high school? Could've fought me! Wayne the Piston Cup could save this whole town, and I can't race because of one bad day? This is a witch hunt, your honor! <laughs> Just in court. <laughs> God, I tell you, Austin, the concept art for that that sketch just made it so much more, makes it so much more funnier. <laughs> the poorly drawn concept art. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Can't wait to see Joe's reaction when he gets off work. Oh, well, like, this motherfucker! Yup. Eh. <laughs> you might. I'm telling you right now, he might have to do a rant. He'll do a rant. The fact that he said, <laughs> Rocky nonsense. Oh, Joe's gonna be. Oh, man. It's me, Gareth. Do you have a moment? Oh, is that AJ? It's AJ. What's up, buddy? The fact that I have a question for John Campy though, because he said, because he said that he he's looking forward to seeing good Italian representation on screen. Why does he care about that? I thought he was Canadian. That's exactly. what I, that's what I want to know. He always talks about himself being Canadian, so... Why does he care? Why does he care? I mean, the fact that he says that he's looking forward to seeing good re Italian representation on screen. Oh my god. Why do you care, dude? You're Canadian. Why do you even care about that? I can tell you this, as an Italian Canadian, I'm very excited to see some real, authentic Italian. Oh, Italian Canadian. Oh, okay. Yeah, look, he's an Italian Canadian. Oh, okay. Can you seriously just say, like, Marius Rocky Nonsense, though? Raw, hmm? 
How did you have to put him in his place, no mercy? <laughs> Austin, calm down now. You got Lucy now. Yeah, go up, man. Your sister should sure did. Yes. Um... I don't... It's me, Gareth. I'm not sure. Called Puffskin Dunkin once since you brought me that venomous tentacular leaf. I think I am actually braver. Incendio. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that once Phil gets off and sees that video I sent, he's gonna he's gonna be like, this motherfucker. Because <laughs> he loves that new Creed movie. Like he loves Creed 3, so. Oh, he saw it the other night. He loved it. Tell you this, as an Italian Canadian, I'm very excited to see some real, authentic Italian representation on screen. Yeah. None of this rocky nonsense. Yeah. I want real Italian representation. Come on, Godfather. Off to couch oh, come on. Like presume. it's some real Italian representation. Anyway, got. Oh, <laughs> the oh the fact that did they really mention? The... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Did his did his co-host this shit talk on a godfather? Yeah. Motherfucker. Bitch. He just shit talked on one of the greatest movies of all time. How dare he? How dare he? Who is this? Who is this guy who's... Butter. I want to know who this guy is who said that because... Oh my god. Because it wasn't John Campion, it was one of his co-hosts. Okay. All the folks in shop. Okay. I'm running on my broom right now. Oh, hey, here's the uh, Quidditch place where we play Quidditch. Too bad we can't play. Yeah. Too, play too bad we can't. What's up? I think you can do them any time. I'm not sure. I think you can do them any time though. What's up? He's just what? He's calling you AJ Schwarzkopf. My fucking guy. Nice. Oh. Oh, 
Oh really? There's a wolf that's after me. Wow. Okay, I got him. Damn, I didn't know that wolves are enemies in this game. Did you see what I said about me talking about Sean Cameron doing a video of them cutting back MCU content? Yes. I think this is a smart move. I think you really need to I, I, I think said quality is. over quantity. Yeah, like, I... I... Like, let me see if I can find that video again. They've been putting out a lot of content. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, stupid ass. Get out of here. You know, one of my long running big complaints about the MCU in the last couple of years, and, and I remember expressing concern about this all the way back in my. AMC and Collider days was that as Marvel, which you know used to put out like two films a year and then three films a year, but as we started to see their output picking up more and more and more, I started getting concerned. And I would say this on the show, people would say I was just being silly, but I started saying, so look, the more stuff you start putting out, you are stretching your quality control. And I remember once, I think it was Schnepp and I were talking, and I said, here's the thing when you're making three movies, you have your best people working on those three movies. When you make four, you're now hiring a whole bunch of people that before you wouldn't have hired when you just had three. Now you're taking the fourth level people to get, right? And I said just, I, now that's, that's hyperbole, yes, but it does illustrate the point that the more you start to do, your quality control starts to get out of focus. And you now have people working on projects that before you wouldn't have had working on projects. But your A and B list people are all busy with other projects. Now you got to fill these. And in the, ever since Phase 4, I have talked a lot on this show about the fact that I just, you can really feel the fact that Kevin Feige is no longer directly in control of the quality control. Like hell with Dark Strange and Multiverse of Madness, he barely touched that film at all. Like he specifically said one of the reasons he went on God Sam Raimi is because he wanted a filmmaker that he didn't have to supervise. And I think you're feeling in the MCU that lack of supervision. And it's I think it has been a problem for the MCU. No, MCU Yeah, is there are definitely absolutely. things that But the overall quality, which we'll get into a bit a little bit later, I think has decreased. And you know who else has noticed that? Bob Iger has noticed that. In a new article in the Hollywood Reporter. Uh, which is a great article, which I highly recommend. You go and check them out. The title of the article is How Much is Too Much Marvel and Star Wars? Disney Rethinks Franchise Output. Basically, the article runs down that, that Big Pop Iger has put out the mandate. We're going to cut things down. We're going to start reining back in how the sheer glut of content we've been putting out, particularly when it comes to the MCU. Number one because it's super expensive and we're putting a lot of money into things that is not our top product it's one thing to put in a lot of money for something like an avengers film that you know is going to be you know you've got your best people on it you know it's going to have great financial returns and all that kind of stuff but we're also putting top money into things that we shouldn't be putting top money into all for the sake of meeting a content quota that really should not be the case and this article goes into that in detail. Now, this is a great part of this article. In the Holy Report, in this one paragraph, they say the following. As a point of comparison, this really illustrates it great. During its phase four, Marvel Studios released a breakneck 18 projects across theatrical and streaming 
four films and five TV shows in 2021 alone, three films and three TV shows in 2022, plus two specials. The studio released just 11 projects from 2016 to 2019. Like, the, the, the amount of output they've just done has hurt their quality control. Now, Kevin Feige seems to really be on board with this because Feige said the following. He said, Marvel Studios had Kevin Feige echo the new direction. The pace at which we're putting out the Disney Plus shows will change, Feige told Entertainment Weekly in an interview published this week. Nothing that there will, uh, noting that there will be fewer shows and that they will be more spaced out. Now, consistent with that, we just found okay. out that Echo and there was another one. Uh, what are the other shows? Echo and one more. Um, there's Has, Agatha's show. I don't think it was there's... Agatha. I think it was one of the other ones. That, there it, it was Agatha. Has now been pushed to 2024. So they're spacing that out of it. Maybe it was the Agatha one. Because they we're definitely getting yeah. still Secret Invasion this year. And there's one other one we're still getting this year. What's that? Was it Loki? Yes, it Loki? Loki. No, Loki is still definitely coming out this year. And I think Secret Invasion is definitely coming out this year. But a couple of the other ones have been pushed out. So you can already see they're putting in motion, spacing these out a little bit. And they're going to start reducing the project, the the, uh, the content. Now, Chris, you said something earlier that I think oh, really echoes adventure. with this. You are, are more of a quality girl than a quantity girl, okay. right? And who lives that, in. I think, is what is written all over this. It's like, listen, we don't want to go back to like one or two projects a year, but this whole thing about having nine projects come up in one year, it is not sustainable. And it has been one of the culprits of... I'm hey, going to Corey. A later why I believe the MCU has now lost its magic. We're, and we'll talk about that when we start talking about Ant-Man. But I think... That cannot be completely Shane separated Bardo. from this one thing. When you're one of nine things, answer. how can you I keep the quality it. control at that pace? Mm. You can't. So uh, I love hearing this news. I hope they don't go too far the other way. Like, I don't want to go back to the day where there's only one or two MCU projects coming out a year. But they've got to start reeling back in. And I love hearing that they are. Because the MCU, a lot of people don't want to admit it. The MCU has an issue right now. And I think this is not the only one, one of the causes, and I'm glad to see that they're doing something to address it. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video. I like what you said there. Yeah. I'm going to go to sleep. All right, man. I think it's well. Yeah, me too, man. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with them spacing out MCU content, like... Like... Yeah, but, like, they've been kind of overdoing putting out content lately, so... So they've been kind of rushing stuff, so... Yeah, I, I like that they're kind of spacing things out. How do you feel about that, AJ? I, I, I like the fact that they're doing this. Because if you have too much, too much going out, coming out at like so much coming out, like you're gonna start to lose your like you you're gonna people are gonna start to kind of rush things. But I like that they're doing this. Like, this makes me have faith in MCU again. Like, How nice to maybe see they can still, friend. maybe, maybe they can get, start, get, what start to get to be better. Problem? You may well ask. I'm convinced I saw a grim, an omen of death. I didn't mind Ammon either, but I will admit it does have issues, but I, I, I like it for what it was. 
is an invisibility potion. Yes, that's what I need. I'm afraid I'm all out of invisibility potion. I suggest finding somewhere safe and being especially careful. Safe? Careful? Uh, yes, that makes sense. And you're sure you don't... No. Very well. Would you want help in a poor old witch? What seems to be the problem? You may well ask. I'm convinced I saw a grim, an omen of death. I'm not safe. But if it can't see me, I'll be all right, won't I? All I need is an invisibility potion. Yes, that's what I need. I'm afraid I'm all out of invisibility potion. I suggest finding somewhere safe and being especially careful. Safe? Careful? Uh, yes, that makes sense. And you're sure you don't... No. Very well. I would so appreciate a little help. He didn't say anything. Let's go this way. Mommy at ten thirty really? Ten fifty two. Ten fifty seven he said that. Wow, AJ. Why am I not surprised he said that? AJ, how do you feel about this whole MCU thing? Does it get any more cozy than Hogsmeade? I was just curious what your thoughts were on that, buddy. Yes, good. Okay, you 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 say it's a good idea. Okay, buddy. Yeah, I agree, buddy. I think it's a good move. Yes, sweetheart, mommy. Jesus Christ. Slippery as a kelp, you are. 
What did you hold up, AJ? I gotta see what you said in a second. Just let me just miss it. It's shameful what you've done to helpless beasts. Alright, let me see what you said. I was in the middle of some combat, but I'm back now. Let me see. I'm coming, you. I'm coming, you coming, pretty lips. What the fuck? I see, Jay. These rocks have seen better days. I mean, this means that there's going to be a lot less Marvel movies and shows coming out, but it'll be worth it. It just means they're just going to take their time with it. Instead of having, like, so many things come out in one year. Sometimes it seems all roads lead to Hogsmeade. Oh, I want to know what he thought of the Mandalorian premiere. Hold on, I want to know what... I want to watch his Mandalorian premiere review. Yeah. I loved it. Oh, and there's a there's a video I watched the other day of John Campius of him talking about who it could be who said the uh, "Grow you out of Jedi Temple" when the purge happened. Mandalorian comes back midnight tomorrow night for those of us in Los Angeles, and one of the big burning questions is, as brought up by our hotline question, is. We finally got to find out who rescued Grogu. Check it out. Hey, John. This is John from New York. I just wanted to know what your thoughts were with the Mandalorian Season 3 coming up soon. What are the chances you think we'll get to see who saved Grogu from the Jedi Temple? Up to you, your thoughts. Thanks, and bring on the filthy. 
All right, John from New York. Thank you for calling. Double New York questions coming in here today. Thanks for, for, for calling that in. Okay, so Mandalorian comes back tomorrow night at midnight. I am stoked. I'm excited about it. Cannot wait. One of the big, I, I dare say, the big question still hanging over Mandalorian narratively is who got Grogu out of the Jedi Temple? Abandoned long ago. We had that flashback episode when he came across Ahsoka where they found out that he was in the Jedi Temple when the purge happened. He was there when Anakin showed up to start killing everybody. And they have not answered that question yet. Kind of thought, a lot of us did, that when they got to the finale of season two, that the reveal might happen there. That they might have revealed what in the finale of season two who rescued him and all that kind of stuff that he did not. I'm going to say, on the one hand, the trailers don't look like Grogu is really a central part of this story. I mean, obviously, Grogu's going to have a very prominent presence in it, but everything in the in the promos so far have been this is about Mandalore. This whole thing is about retaking Mandalore, or, you know, uh, Din getting his Mandalorian status back in the eyes of the armorer and all this kind of stuff. That really looks like the central crux. But even with that being said, I do believe they're going to reveal this because you can't drag that out too long. Although John Favreau did say he's already got season four. Possibility. But I do think they're going to answer that question this year. And this season. The, and who it could be, I don't know. But I know one person that it better not be. And they might. It better not be Anakin. It better not be Anakin. Because I've seen a lot of theories online, and, and I get why the theory is there. That maybe Anakin, there was still a little shred of his humanity still there, saw Gro baby Grogu, felt bad, decided to uh, take take it to, some, to one of the clone troopers, like, take this one out and put it on some shuttle. I mean, I, I don't know, right? But they better not, and here's why. Because that would be retconning a basic tenet of all of Star Wars lore's since the very first episode that once Anakin turned on the Jedi his humanity was gone and the whole precipice of everything has been the only thing that could bring him back even in a small way well yeah oh gosh I can't remember I can't remember the Jedi. His humanity was gone, and the whole precipice of everything has been the only thing that could bring him back even in a small way was his own son. That's been the conceit of the whole lore of Star Wars ever since the beginning. That's it. Luke, and only Luke, could make Vader rediscover little vestiges of humanity in and of himself to bring him back if they retcon that to give some stupid little idiotic novelty fan service moment of oh i am a kid if they if they do that it will be one of the worst things that i think star wars has done in a long time it won't it won't ruin the show don't get me wrong I, no hyperbole it's not going to ruin the show it'll well no mandalorian sucks if they do no 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 nothing like that but I think as a momentary mistake, it would be a monumental retcon mistake for them to do that. The whole notion and principle that once he gave his soul over to Palpatine, he was gone until Luke made him rediscover it again. And if you go back and change that for what? For a momentary pop in a Disney Plus series? I'm going to be extremely dis Again, if will not ruin my enjoyment of Mandalorian. It won't make me suddenly think John Favreau doesn't know what he's doing. Not at all. But I will be very disappointed. And and I will think that would be a huge mistake on their part. Anyway, Rob, the base question here is, will they reveal this year who rescues Grogu at the temple? And if you had to take a shot in the dark at who it might be, who do you think it could be? 
Yes, they're going to reveal it, and I think it's Force Ghost Qui Gon Jinn. Oh. Stupid ads. Get out of here. Really? Mm. Why is that? Because he had to oversee. He was the person that brought Anakin into the fold. He was dispensed with, but he's, his presence is there. You know, we've seen him existing. And Anakin was going to slaughter. He was slaughtering younglings. You think he's going to stop when he sees baby Grogu? No, I think that Anakin... It wasn't Anakin. I think we're going to see that it was Force Ghost Qui-Gon rescuing because... Grogu was in touch with the living force. Is and I, it, it, I just think it would be cool, you know. And like you said, I can't. If it's Anakin, it's a betrayal of the entire Star Wars mythos. And I, I, I just think that it's a good use of Qui Gon. It makes sense because we don't. Grogu is supposedly fifty years old. So how old is he? Trying to the, the purge. Qui Gon already. Killed. You know, I just think it'd be kind of interesting. If it was the living force saving itself. I mean, the other thing that can't get me is little child, little child, little child. Oh, I can't help myself, but this is little child. You look like you're a gift box. You're a gift box. Here we go. First episode of May Always Season 3. Finally! Depending on what time zone you live in yesterday, maybe for you it was early this morning. But the Mandalorian has returned. He's back. And so is that little green gobba goo we call Baby Yoda. And you know, you notice John Favreau, uh, no spoiler intended here, this shit doesn't give any plot away. But John Favreau, who clearly is very annoyed that a lot of people, including myself, still call him Baby Yoda, had had a moment in the episode where Din, the Mandalorian, was very quick to correct somebody who called him something. He says, Grogu. His name is Grogu. Fuck you, it's Baby Yoda. Anyway, so <laughs> Mandalorian is back with a whole many... I lost count of how many shots just went to a table's edge with Baby Yoda's <laughs> heads coming. They made sure they had a lot of ah, moments with Baby Yoda, as well they should. As well they should. Because that little green gabagoo made this show iconic, made this show a hit. Because, you know, the first episode of Mandalorian Season 1, 
that was good. It was whatever. But when that damn little baby Yoda showed up, that's when the internet exploded. That's when everybody lost their minds. So sure enough, they gave you a good little bit of uh, baby Yoda in this as well. First episode came out. Now, just so you know, a little bit later this afternoon at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that's 5 p.m. New York time, I am going to be doing a Mandalorian open spoiler after show where we can talk in all the spoilery details about the episode. We're going to keep this discussion of it in a non-spoilery kind of way. Um, but I'm going to tell you, there are a couple of logic points in this episode you know, Robbie and I were talking about one or two of them before we started the thing. That, to me, we're like, how does that part make sense? That aside, I felt like we were back. Um, I, I enjoyed the episode a great deal. It started with a bit of a bang. It oh, ended... AJ, I just saw you hopped on mine. I think Joe's coming home. He's going to help you with your thing, right? Hey, uh, Austin, I think, I think AJ's gonna come in here on a second account because, well, not a second, his same account, but he's gonna come in a second time because Joe is working, you know, work on his Destiny 2 campaign for him. He gave him his PlayStation information and he's gonna help him out. Seems a pleasant enough little place. Surprised Joe hasn't said anything about that video I sent. What is so funny? Oh, I hate. Damn. How about suck these nuts? Say for month like on Monday because I'm going to the gender reveal party. And my new niece or nephew will see what happens. Okay now. Expelliarmus! 
see what happens. I just asked him, Joe, are you joining us? Oh, really? Can't handle a little altercation. Since he will win it to be and it's all over. Okay. I need some more health potions. I'm gonna go to the potion shop and get more health potions. I really need more health potions. Come after me, they'll rest in ten graves. Hogs meet, here I come.
So I'm assuming maybe Elle is helping you right now, EJ. I'm just assuming. Because I see that you're playing Destiny 2. Oh, you, you didn't realize you were muted? Check my account. She very far. She very good far. You can change your C points. Yeah. That's true, AJ. We're always here to help you, buddy. If you ever need any help with games, just give us. Don't, don't, don't worry about it, buddy. Just give us our, your PlayStation information and we'll help you out, buddy. We always got your back. Welcome. Do let me know if I can be of any assistance at all. What is the hell potion? Oh, here we go. A wise decision. Thank you. Getting three of them. I hope to see you again. Farewell for now. Uh, I've been streaming for almost three hours now. Damn. I'm at two hours, 40 minutes, and 25 seconds right now. So I've been streaming for almost three hours. Crossplay? Oh, that's me too. Okay. Yeah, AJ just needs some. AJ needs some help with some of the new DLC I just came out the other day. Yeah, whatever, yeah. Now I can finish watching, uh, so I can finish watching, uh, John Campion's review. I'm gonna watch it from the beginning again, just because I haven't been, really been listening to what he's been saying. Yesterday, maybe for you it was early this morning, but the Mandalorian has returned. He's back. So is that little green goblin goo we call Baby Yoda. And you know, you know it's John Favreau. No spoiler intended here. This shit doesn't give any plot away. But John Favreau clearly is very annoyed that a lot of people, including myself, still call him Baby Yoda. Had had a moment in the episode where Din, the Mandalorian, was very quick to correct some of you, called him something says Grogu. His name is Grogu. Fuck you, it's Baby Yoda. Anyway, 
So, Mandalorian is back with a whole many icons count of how many shots just went to a table's edge with baby Yoda heads coming. They made sure they had a lot of oh, moments with baby Yoda, as well they should. As well they should. Sometimes because it seems all right. That little that green gabagoo me. made this show iconic, made this show a hit. Because, you know, the first episode of Mandalorian season one. That was good. It was whatever. But when that damn little baby Yoda showed up, that's when the internet exploded. That's when everybody lost their mind. So sure enough, they gave you a good little bit of uh, baby Yoda in this as well. First episode came out. Now, just so you know, a little bit later this afternoon at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that's 5 p.m. New York time, I am going to be doing a Mandalorian open spoiler after show where we can talk in all the spoilery details about the episode. We're going to keep this discussion of it in a non-spoilery kind of way. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, there are a couple of logic points in this episode. You know, Robbie and I were talking about one or two of them before we started the thing. That, to me, we're like, how did that one part make sense? That aside, I felt like we were back. Um, I, I enjoyed the episode a great deal. It started with a bit of a bang. It ended, I think, in a great way. I had a lot of fun with it. Din is still Din, and I love, you know, we have, you know, some recurring characters. We have some new characters pop up, up sort of sorts of stuff. We get some Baby Yoda. We get some gun action. We get all that kind of stuff. It just really felt good to be back. Now, Ray was mentioning earlier that he felt that this season premiere, because there's now been three, was the weakest of the season premieres of Mandalorian so far. And I would concur. I would concur. But to me, that's more of a commentary on really, really loving the, the uh, season one premiere and season two premiere. I still like this premiere very much, but I will say this, and I hopped on social media after the episode was done. And I very much enjoyed the episode. I'm looking forward to talking about it in a more open, spoilery way later. But I got on social media after it was done, and I said, you know, now that I'm used to watching The Last of Us, you really feel how short these Mandalorian episodes are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kind of yep. Kind of in, the, in the rhythm and the custom of watching episodes of The Last of Us, and then now you pop up Mandalorian, and it's like, oh, wait, it's done? The credits are over? What? We literally just need and when you take away like seven minutes of previously on and then the credits roll in this episode oh hold on let's go it was like 28 minutes and you really really now that's not new for this season that has been an ongoing criticism i have of mandalorian in general and so i i really Oops. I feel the shortness of it, but overall, I thought it was a win, coming out of the gate strong. Anyway, Rob, you feel exactly as I do on this episode, and you love it. Hey, 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 hey. Well, here's the thing. I didn't love it as much as you did, and I, I won't get into it. I, I do see a really interesting potential for this show, and where I would like to see it go, and I think they're, they're setting that up, which is, the name of this episode is The Apostate. Oops. He is the apostate, and what he needs to do is he needs to get in the graces of his. I'm assuming he probably system. did. He, his belief system. He's right. true. He's true. Cool. And he's been cast out because it's he's violated the rules. Incendiary. The main rule is that he wants to get the fact that he wields the dark saber. You know, he has the dark saber, and and I can see that a lot of this is going to have to do with Mandalore, like we've all suspected. I really think it's going to be an interesting story if they have, if they have Din is going to try and unite two disparate factions. Oh, hey, AJ. I got to bring this up, buddy, because I know how much you love it. I knew how much you were going to love the episode. What did you think of that episode of Bad Batch, buddy? I knew you would love it. Like, the moment we were watching uh, Bad Batch the other night after Mandalorian, we were just thinking to ourselves, oh my god, AJ's going to love this episode. 
together somehow. I don't know. He's got to get in the good graces of one and figure out what the other one is. And I'm going to lead him. And and because they're they both want, I think, the same things, which is to restore the greatness of their destroyed home planet of men. I love this idea. I think that's going to be a great story. I want to see that story I develop guess. well. Really? <laughs> this season, because they've said, you know, Favreau's saying that he has. Uh, they already know season, season four is written. Yeah. So I think that they, they know where they're going, so they have a large tapestry that they um, are going after. I think it's great. That said, I felt that this episode left me a, a little bit cold in the sense that, you know, there's a lot of walking in this show. The Mandalorian walks everywhere. You know, he gets out, he walks down the street. So there's a lot of walking down. Cut to where you're going, dude. Like, like, why are we? I, and I get it. It's the way the show is shot, and I think I keep. I, it's the I, Western style. Yeah, I, I just hark back to like Andor, and because they use a lot of they shoot in the volume stages, and I'm and after coming off of Andor, where they were shooting on these beautiful European locations, and they would set real sets life sets and everything. I felt that I, I really felt it this time that I could tell they're making it in a different way. But other than that, you know. It's not a spoiler. It's a little thing that Grogu was doing <laughs> that I thought was great. He he was sitting in a chair, and he kept spinning the chair. Oh, like, that, yeah, uh, that was adorable. I loved it. Yeah, I just yeah, was yeah. like, that was a... That's actually like, in the trailer, so that's not a spoiler at all. Oh, the adults are talking, you know, and he's just like, wow, this chair spins around. <laughs> it was just, I don't know. I, lo- I, I love that. And I loved, you know, we know Carl Weathers, we see him, and, and uh, it was great. They did set the table. The table is set. We know what's going on. We, if we meet some new people, we don't know. I'm sure they're coming back, as you pointed out. So the table is set, and um, we're off to the races. I, I just want to... I, I hope the show gets as good as I want it to get. There is one thing I will mention here. That... You may consider this a spoiler... It has no impact on anything narratively that happens in the episode, though, okay? Let me be clear. It's something that one of the characters notices and sees. All right? Ready? I've I've prepped you a little bit. Goddamn space whales. <laughs> oh, you like those? Those are neat, huh? Oh yeah, I love them. I love them now, so much. Ooh. Is there something canonically? <laughs> is this something that has? It's has, a rebels thing. They were in rebels. Was, they were in rebels. <laughs> uh, and god damn it. Um, yeah, I, I'm. I and I, I. I'm a big fan of rebels. I. I like. Like I think out of the the Star Wars animated stuff between Clone Wars and Rebels, I, I think. I'm I, and I'm in the minority in this. I understand that, but I think Rebels. Vastly superior when I love I've Rebels. Said the travel but that doesn't mean I love mind. every little detail about Rebels. So, yeah, you know, that's that's going to come into play later in the season, I think. I, I don't think that was just a, a one kind of uh, glimpse thing. <laughs> damn it. It's freaking damn things. Anyway, guys, question is for you. <laughs> Did you guys have a chance to watch Season 3, Episode 1 of The Mandalorian? If so, what did you guys think? Best Mandalorian ever? Did you think I good but maybe not the best premiere they've had or, or whatever anything between whatever you guys think jump down to the comment section below and don't forget to join us a little bit later today for our mandalorian open spoiler after show we look forward to seeing you guys then guys who want to think a sponsor of this video rocket money the average person all right you know i i'm gonna i'm gonna watch this open spoiler discussion why not What is? Oh, wow. Hmm. Well, hey, guys. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to our special Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 1, open spoiler discussion, Return of the fucking Space Whales. Woo! <laughs> free Willy in fucking space. <laughs> Anyway, uh, guys, welcome to the show. Really it's good to have you here. We are going to talk about Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 1, in all of its open, spoilery goodness. Uh, in case I did not just completely give it away, this is going to be an open spoiler discussion. That means we're going to talk in all the details about the episode of Mandalorian 
episode one of season three. So if you have not seen that episode yet, you might want to just add this video to your favorites list and come on back a little bit later. Otherwise, you have been warned. All right, let's get into some blowhole goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, Mandalorian has returned uh, to a lot of excitement. Obviously, I was really, really excited for this thing coming back. I love this show. Um, and, you know, I we, we mentioned today earlier on the John Campia show, when we were doing our non-spoilery uh, kind of way, that I I like this. I think this is a good start to the season. But Ray had pointed out that he thought it was the weakest of the three season premieres. You know, season one, episode one, season two, episode uh, one, and now season three, episode one. Handy resource indeed, your field and guide. I'm most I, pleased to be included. I think I agree. I mean, episode one of the first Mandalorian was was pretty good, but Come it got on. it got great with with Baby Yoda showing up. Right, right. Baby Yoda showing up made that episode great. Um. So yeah, I would I would say this. I, I would I would agree. I think this is the weakest of the season premieres. But still a very, very good episode. And, like, come on, show of hands. Who else was fooled yeah. at the beginning? I think so. Getting? Oh, like, yeah. uh, come on, that was. I, I completely bought into the idea that that was a flashback. When they start off on the little beach, the little John the Baptist Mandalorian, you know, getting ready to... Oh, I said that was a flashback, too. Something like Pedro Pascal. I guess that should have been our first clue. <laughs> the kid looked nothing like Pedro Pascal. And was getting ready to christen him into the world of man and the way. And then, uh, yeah, but I, I gotta admit, though, how well did they know this area, this little lake... It's this freaking giant damn lizard. Like, what's the name of the giant lizard in the Rampage video game? Um, what is that one? Lizzie? Lizzie? I yeah. Think so. Yeah, that freaking Lizzie is living in this thing. This thing that's the size of four skyscrapers. Yeah, nobody. Nobody. Nobody thought, hey, maybe we should have a couple of Mandalorians floating up in the air to keep an eye in case freaking Lizzie decides to wake up getting ready for a date with the space whales. <laughs> that was kind of funny. But still, this incredible battle breaks out a lot. <laughs> Yes, but the creed teaches us you can be redeemed 
down in the sacred waters of Mandalore. To which I was expecting her to say, yeah, I'm the one who told you that, asshole. I'm the one who told you about, you know, go down and wash yourselves in the magical elixir mermaid infested waters down there where there may or may not be space whales. Go on down to those waters. I'm the one who told you that. So that, that kind of hit me as a little bit weird that they were having this conversation. And, you know, when you go back, you know, the armor is like, you can be redeemed if you, you know, bathe in the waters of Mandalore. And he goes, but Mandalore is destroyed. She's like, this is the way. All right. Well, they had that conversation. And now it's like, he's telling her that. And she's like, but it's impossible. It can't be done. It's like, what are you, you're the one who told him that that's what he needs to do. But then one of our viewers on the show this morning brought up a really, really, really good point in that what if you did, because that scene where the armorer explains to uh, Din what he needs to do, that happened in the Book of Boba Fett. And what happened if you're a viewer who's not watching Book of Boba Fett, you're just watching the Mandalorian show. You, you don't want that viewer to be lost. So you make them have that conversation again so that it's not required if you're a viewer that you have to go back and watch the Book of Boba Fett again or watch the Book of Boba Fett at all, which you should not have your friends, if you're a good friend, don't make them watch Book of Boba Fett. It's a bad show. You know, oh, by recreating that conversation again... I love Book of Boba Fett. I don't care what you say. ...to be your prerequisite to go back and watch Book of Boba Fett. And that... That was a really, really good point that one of our viewers brought up, and I liked that a lot. It made me appreciate the scene more. Again, I even like the little extra angle where he pulled like a little Indiana Jones. Is this crystal not with the inscriptions of the Mandalore on it or something like that? I thought that little angle on there, too, bringing up the Jawas again, saying this was from a Jawa who got it from a traitor who said he got it from the service of Mandalore and all that kind of stuff. So that was pretty groovy. And then they go to Navarro, which, of course... We know every season of Mandalorian at some point is going to end up on Navarro because Apollo Creed needs to, to get his FaceTime in. We need Apollo Creed to have his FaceTime. Carl Weathers is great in this show. So they get there. And you know what? By the way, I read a great interview uh, or a great article the other day about this where uh, John Favreau specified that they know they haven't done a great job of this, but a lot of time passes in this show. And Favreau was mentioning to one of the reporters that years have passed since Din first found Baby Yoda. Because the way the show runs, like, you could be a viewer of this show and think that it's been three months since Din came across Baby Yoda. But according to John Favreau, no, no, it's been years. Like, years have passed. And that kind of explains when you get to Navarro, and it's a, like a completely different town now. It's been, it's totally evolved and all that kind of stuff, and that makes it make a lot more sense. Of course, he comes across Reef because he needs to get IG-11. That's the name of the robot, right? Yeah, IG-11. You know, they, they came up with an interesting narrative reason why they need him. It's like, look, if I'm going to be scanning the services of a supposedly poisoned Mandalore, I'm going to need IG-11. And you know what? They even there, because I, I heard some people say, well, why doesn't he just get another droid? Remember, go back to season one. Does it get any more cozy than Din Hogsmeade? did not and does not trust droids. At all. Remember that? I, it's been a while, but let's remember that. Din does not trust droids at all. And IG-11 was the first one that he truly trusted. Obviously because of the reprogramming of little Nick Nolte. Little pig-faced Nick Nolte reprogramming IG-11 making him an adorable little babysitter and so that actually laid the foundation of a good narrative purpose about number one why he needed ig-11 because of the, the, his worries about the service of man and why he wouldn't just get another droid because ig-11 is the first and only droid he's ever trusted okay that makes sense that being said gentlemen i pose this to you and i'm talking to ray taylor now. Uh -huh. i can only imagine the conversation that happens when at some point Din is able to collect whatever device they use. By the way, if it's just some processor, wouldn't this be a readily available thing? Like, isn't there like Star Wars, Amazon, they can just jump on and get some like, if it's just, like, there's a lot of droids. Couldn't a lot of them have this piece? Anyway, once Din gets whatever little piece of technology he needs to revive and restore IG-11, I want to hear that conversation. Oh, Din. Thank you for being such a good friend that you would bring me back and save me. 
wait a minute. It's been three years since I blew up. <laughs> you, you, you've had the ability to bring me back this whole time, and you haven't brought me back in three years. Why not? Well, now I need you. You only brought me back. You've had me standing as a statue in fucking Times Square when you could have. You had the ability to bring me back anytime the last three years. Oh, but now that you need me, now you bring me back. I get it. I get it. It's like when Ray pops over for a visit, and I find, and I then I initially I gotta ask. So, so what's on HBO that you're waiting to watch, Ray? What's what's on HBO that you're waiting to watch? Oh my. Yeah. Now you come over for a visit, but I but I come with all the instructions printed already all over me. You can see exactly <laughs> why I'm there. I don't try to hide it. The first thing I do is I don't even say hi. I walk in, I sit down, I said, "Hey, can I use your HBO Max?" And then I'll turn it. Even if you say no, I'll watch my thing and I'll leave. No, I'll no, go, I don't even close. First, you go into my fridge. Yeah, and, and I don't and, even take off my shoes. I don't even close the door. <laughs> If you guys are eating something, we are eating that thing now. <laughs> so, Sometimes and then, of course, because everybody loved eat. Babu Freak, they had to bring in a little race of Babu Freaks. And that's fine. It, it, they're known as the great technologists. That that works. And there you are, cute and adorable. With a small hand. And we're going to make a small little hand. I got to admit, that, that shot of that when the camera goes wide and there were a little repair shop, and you see that Din is like sitting crunched over. In the little, oh, their yeah. little uh, works. Yeah. I, I, I didn't get funny. that at first. Then I understood that. Oh, and how how many? This image right here. How many sideshow collectible figures of this are they gonna sell? You know, Ray told me he's gonna get that as a lower back tattoo after this after show today. <laughs> Actually, I think it looks like Bobble Freak is getting a lower back tattoo. From the, <laughs> he's getting tattooed up in the, right there. Huh? There you go. It's not so Baby Yoda anymore. <laughs> Hey, be grateful that uh, I'm not eating you like the frog. For some reason, I hear Chandler's whispers playing when I look at it. Chandler's whisper. I mean, not but yet. All honesty, now that you guys are holding it. Help 
tackle him, but in order for the lady frog to help him first, he's got to help her get her tackle, her husband, or whatever it was. Common, common Mandalorian story following, common overall, like, adventure. You get plot, subplot, sub, subplot. So they're setting that up very quickly in the episode. Okay, then we meet the, the pirates. Uh, the freaking pirates of Penzance. Who are, I'm waiting for this guy to break into. I am the very model of the modern man. Only some of you would want to have that reference, but. Hey, hey, Dave. I, I want to ask you a question, AJ. What do you think the chances of Sabine from Rebels popping up in this season of Mandalorian? Because me and Joel think it's a good chance just because he, she is Mandalorian. Me and Joel think it's a very good chance that she will be. We'll find out, though. But anyway, good on you if you did. So they run into the pirates, and of course, pirates are two-dimensional. Scratch that. One-dimensional. Arr! We're here to drink alcohols in the schools with the kiddies. We don't care. Like, okay, whatever. But they're pirates, so pirates be pirating. It's all good. So they, they go through all that thing. Uh, grief, you know, show they want to show off grief is still a badass. He can still outdraw you and just shoot the gun out of your hand. And then you can walk away and live if you want. But, you know, the other guys get silly and they get foolish. They're going to pull their weapons to you, of course. Grief and Din gun them all down. And there you go. So that showed that up. But let me tell you my one, oh, come on, moment in the episode. It, it came at this point. Grief. Hi, Commissioner. What, what's his title? Hi, what? Oh, hi, hi, hi. Yeah, I'm thinking so hi, too. Dealer. Oh, you you think he's gonna be in the two? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. The high magistrate. Grief. He has been around for a while. He knows the game. He was a bounty hunter administrator. He's a killer. He's all these things. And when he, when, when Din says to him, you sure it's a good idea to let that guy go? Din was saying out loud what all of us were thinking. Huh, this doesn't seem wise. This, this doesn't seem like it's going to have a good ending, just letting this one go. I mean, at the very least, give the magistrate this place and get him thrown in jail. No, so let him go. I've always said the travel and Din says to him, hey, was this a good idea to let him go? And Grief says, no, he'll now take word out that th what happens when you trifle with Navarro and ev everybody will stay away now. And I'm thinking, you can't be that fucking gullible. You can't be that stupid. That is never how this works. And I just, I remember it bothered me a bit because Grief is, of course, a an experienced guy who should know this shit. And, of course, it comes back to bite them in the ass again a little bit later. Anyway. So now with his sub quest, right? Main quest, get to me. Oh, hold up. Sub sub quest need to get this part so they can fix IG eleven. So with all that now laid out and all that in place, Din and, and uh, Baby Yoda, and I know Din at one point corrects Greek by saying Grogu. His name's Grogu. Nah, fuck you. His name's Baby Yoda. So, <laughs> as, so Baby Yoda and Din... Oh, by the way, that was an adorable part when he uses his force powers to get the candy. Oh, I love the orange Reese's pieces. So, they get in the ship. They take off. There's a great little father-son kind of moment. Because, hey, this, being a Mandalorian is about more than just knowing how to fight. You gotta navigate your way around the galaxy and all that great stuff. And, of course, the pirate and a little space battle ensues, which was really good, by the way. I, I liked it. That, that was a thrilling, that whole dot of very Empire Strikes Back kind of reminiscence in there as they're weaving in and out of the asteroid belt and all that kind of stuff. And then coming out and seeing the big mothership of the pirates and freaking some swamp things still in there. Yeah, there is David Jones. <laughs> the swamp thing and David Jones illegitimate child together 
uh, is sitting there. Which, by the way, I like the Pirate King. What's yeah, what you're I doing? Like I'm, I'm looking forward to the Pirate King coming back. So they have a little bit of exchange. Didn't get so away. So now we've got quest, sub quest, you can't sub sub quest, how and secondary antagonist for the series. Because obviously the space pirate is not going to be the main antagonist of the series. But we have our secondary antagonist for the sixth season all set up in the first episode. Listen, I got to tell you, it was a very efficient. They they covered a lot of ground in this one episode. Like again, all uh, plot subplot sub subplot or quest subplot quest sub sub quest secondary character. Talk about the fact that he goes and shows up at Bo-Katan's place, sitting in her chair. All su- all was missing was a, a, a cup of cardiac or what, what do you call the alcohol? Is that, it's not cardiac. Uh, cognac. 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 I don't drink alcohol. That's why I don't know this. Co- all she needed was a little hand of cognac right there. Bo-Katan still being all pissy because she doesn't have the the dark saber. But and I guess. But she's justified feeling that way because by not getting the dark saber, her entire What's life's dream of being now? able to go back and liberate Mandalore is kind of down the toilet. So there's that. But you know, she gives him the directions. Here's where you go if you want to try to find the waters of Mandalore. So you can go and scrub your junk in it. Go for it. Scrub oh, your junk in it. So, okay. So that part was accomplished. Again, an awful lot of stuff accomplished, despite the fact. <laughs> That man, these freaking episodes are short. These episodes are short, and and again, maybe I wouldn't have felt it as much if I haven't been getting so accustomed to sitting down and watching Pedro Pascal in an episode of The Last of Us, where a forty-eight minute episode is a short episode, minus the credits. This episode was twenty-eight minutes, and. Man, you felt it because when the credits started to roll, I felt like I just got comfortable, right? Like I feel like I just got comfortable. I got my drink sitting exactly where I wanted to sit. Anne's leaning against my shoulder. She's all comfy. Watch the Mandalorian. As soon as we're settled in, is it what? It's over? I, I mean, look, I, this is a long-standing criticism I have of Disney Plus and their shows, other than Andor. Uh, which, by the way, is probably the better Star Wars show, is Andor. But uh, it's a standing, standing criticism I have of all the Disney Plus shows is these ridiculously short run times. It's me, Gary. Uh, but that aside, moment? I thought a really good, solid start to the season. They set up a hell of a lot of stuff. I'm excited to see IG-11 come back. I'm excited to see more space battles with this pirate. I can't wait to see more Bo-Katan. Um, whatever. The fucking space whales are, are going to be there, I guess, to some degree. Now, listen, I'm seeing a lot of people saying, "Well, they the space whales were there, so we can set up the return of Ezra." I don't know that Ezra returns in this season. Uh, other than the fact that you got the uh, what's the one girl's name yeah, again? Nice the artist see, Mandalorian girl from Rebels. Yeah, yeah. Why am I freezing on her uh, name? Sabine. Sabine. Oh, yeah. Sabine, Sabine Red. Red. Other than the fact that Sabine is in, is in and of herself a Mandalorian who was once the possessor. For those of you who have not seen the Rebel show, she was once the possessor of the dark saber. Um, I don't really see a connection here, but maybe, maybe, or maybe they're just reminding everybody that the space whales are there uh, with their little freaky tentacles. So maybe, maybe that's the case. That could be. I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. If that's what they're doing, they're setting up. I mean, I I really like Rebels. I love the Ezra character. And if they do set it up at Sabine, Ahsoka, Ezra, but I, but I really got a feeling that the I have a feeling the rescuing, the finding and rescuing of Ezra is going to be the main part and the main story of Ahsoka. Yeah. The Ahsoka series. I might be wrong about that. It might be about something totally different, and maybe they find Ezra here, but I don't think they are. But, yeah, whatever it is, what it is. So, guys, listen, those are my thoughts of this first pretty damn solid episode of The Mandalorian for Season 3, Episode 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the important part of the show, 
but we want to hear what you guys have to say about this episode of Mandalorian. And we're, we've got the super chats open. Oh, no. We don't have them open anymore. Sorry, they got filled up. So you guys have been, sent in a whole ton of super chats. We're going to get to those in just a second. But we're going to thank a couple of sponsors of this episode of our open spoiler discussion of The Mandalorian. Our friends at Rocket Money and my mobile phone provider, and they should be yours, Mint Mobile. Guys, who do I think is sponsored this video? All right, I missed some kid for this. Hey, what's up? I gotta admit, I fully admit it 100% worked on me. 
All right, what's next? All right, next up we have Marie Seifring back again. So because he has the Black Saber, Din is now going to become the leader of the movement to recover Mandalore. Interesting. Maybe the two sects can reconcile. I mean, I I still believe that at the end of the day, the Dark Saber is going to get back into the hands of Bo Katan. And I I don't think that Mando and I could by the way I could be 100 percent wrong about this, but I don't see Mando as wanting having any interest in being the leader. Um, I think, but the big problem right now is that according to Moff Gideon, the only way that Bo-Katan can come back into possession of the Darksaber is to defeat Din in combat. And I I wonder if we're not going to get into a sub-sub-sub-sub-quest in this season where Din tries to find a way that he can legitimately pass the dark saber on to her so I, I i don't really know if he's gonna but he's definitely gonna play a role in bringing all the mandalorians back together to retake mandalore he's definitely gonna pay a play a role whether he's the leader doing that or whether he is you know getting bo katan back to her rightful place to be that we'll have to wait and find out but it's, it's interesting to see which way they go with it all right what's next Next up is Sam Fisher. I don't know why, but Mando looked different to me. Shorter and stockier, and the armor didn't quite fit. Maybe it was a different actor in the actual suit. I think they brought back the same two guys. Remember, they've always had two body doubles for Din that do most of the onset acting. One guy is a, is a Hollywood-trained gunfighter guy. The other guy is a physical combat guy. Um, and I believe I read that the, it's been the same two guys for all three seasons i might be incorrect about that but i think it's the same guy could be wrong though I'll, I'll take a little bit of a closer look at that next time i watch the episode again all right interesting observation what's next jose meyer says purgle appearing in hyperspace is a hint for ezra again i don't i don't think that it is i don't think ezra comes to play a part in this it might have just been a little bit of a reminder to the audience or just an interesting visual cue. Hey, they're in hyperspace. Fucking space whales is something that's in Star Wars now. Never been before, but now they're there. You go to hyperspace, you might see space whales. Okay, okay. sure. Okay. What's next? Right, next up is Burke. Resurrected ID went full-blown Terminator 1 mode. Yep, I, I like the idea that when he woke up, he woke up in a previous state. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a termination contract. Kill it. Uh, and I kind of like the way, too, the man also said, listen, if he comes back and he's got all of his limbs and everything, I don't know that I can handle him. So that was actually a pretty cool little rod. I like that. All right, what's next? Up next is Boon Lee Tian. I'd see a Rick Famuyiwa Star Wars movie or a TV show. Me too. He's done a really good job. Now, listen, my favorite direction... In the Mandalorian season so far, has been um, Bryce Dallas Howard's direction. She also was the one. Not only did she did do some fabulous episodes of Mandalorian, she was the one who did the best episode of Book of Boba Fett. Um, so her, her number one, Taika Waititi number two, because because you know I, I know they're all pretty much. Okay. Uh, when he would have the, uh, the Mandalorian to help. So that and Rick would be right up there too because Rick has done a great job as well. All right, what's next? All right, next up, Murray Reich sends in his $20 super chat. Thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you, Murray. It's interesting that uh, the previously on segment only included the moment where the armor tells Mando he's a Man- Mandalorian no more, but nothing of how Mando meets Grogu again. Seems out of place for those that never watched Book of Boba Fett. You know what? I didn't even think about that. But you're absolutely right. They absolutely should have taken about 15 seconds of the previously on, or previously in the story of Mandalorian. 
they should have summed up in 15 seconds or so those events that took place during Mandalorian 2.5, aka Boba Boba They they should have done that. I you know, I didn't even think about that, but you're 100 right. They absolutely should have done that because that is pretty key. I mean, they showed IG-11 sacrificing herself. That was all the way back in, in season one. So yeah, you got to be reminded of that. That was, that was a little bit ago now, but kind of reminding us in the audience of why did would trust this one droid over any others. So I appreciated that, but I think the reason is absolutely 100% valid point. They should have probably covered a little bit of the events of the event to catch everybody up to speed. It's a good point. I didn't even think about it, but you're absolutely right. All right, what's next? Ray Ray asks, so John, did you yell out in the moment in the episode, hello, I am Babu Freak, Who hello. Didn't? I am Babu Freak. Everybody did, come on. Now, that, it wasn't Babu, of course, just a, a bunch of members of his own race, but, um, you know, it, it, it was, at first I thought, oh, this is such blatant fan service. Let's take the one redeeming thing. Oh, yeah, the Babu free. Or the, the Rise of Skywalker. Let's take the one redeeming thing of that movie that people seem to like. Babu free. And let's, let's put a little clan of them in there. And I thought, well, this, re and listen, if if there is anything the Mandalorian at the series has been consistently guilty of, it is throwing in rather pointless fan service on like why did they have to be back on Tatooine? I don't know, because people remember the bar. Everybody remembers the Cantina, everybody they have been consistently guilty of pointless cameo. Pointless cameos, pointless fan service. I missed all the great stuff that they do. And at first I thought, here we go again. Just random pointless fan service by having to be Bobby Freaking. But it, it actually did narratively completely make sense for what the subquest that did is on. That they would be the the experts in that in that area and, and on the planet there. That narratively made sense. So I actually even though it first struck me as hilarious again, <laughs> even though it first, look at that mustache, even though it did at first strike me as really pathetic fan service, by, by the time they got into what they were doing, I'm like, you know what? No, this makes sense. This fits the narrative, and I'm okay with it. All right, what's next? All right, up next is Gunny0813. Really loved this episode, and it didn't skip a beat. Loved all the Star Wars Easter eggs. I can see a fight for Darksaber with bo later on. Yeah, and again, I honestly think that's going to become a significant point of this season, is the transferring of the Dark Saber back into the hands of Bogotan. And how does that happen? How does it work? Is it going to be a mechanism that, that Din discovers? I have discovered in this ancient text, sealed beneath the crystals of man as I bathed my chunk in the waters of man. Described how the dark sea can pass from one Mandalorian to another without combat. I don't know. But, like, whether it's going to be that or, or maybe they the shit. This is Bo Katan's freaking Bo Katan. So maybe they do set it up where they. they yeah. Turn, they... Yeah. Okay. I don't I don't know. I can't remember. For leave themselves and their weapons and they say we're just going straight one on one combat and maybe Bo Katan bests him. Or or they find a way around it. I don't know, but I do think that's gonna become a major point of, of plot moving forward in the series at some point. Alright, what's next? Johnny Weiner. His name is Grogu. Thank you. Never like Baby Yoda. Uh, no, it's Baby Yoda. <laughs> you, you, you can call him you can call him Grogu. You can call him Bill. You can call him whatever you want. It, it, it's Baby Yoda. At least it is to me. 
Alright, what's next? Alright, next up is A-Rod 2006. You think we will see Sabine help Mando and Bo-Katan? No, but again, it would not be outside of feasibility since she, once again, she was the possessor of the Darksaber. She is Mandalorian. So, there are narrative avenues that they could do it. I personally think I think they save her for Ahsoka. But again, the narrative doors are there. Whether they decide to walk through those doors or not, we'll see. All right, what's next? Raymond Verrata. I thought Baby Yoda was going to <laughs> eat Babu Freak. I thought he was going to put on a little bib, too, and eat him. I, I, that's what I thought they were going to do. I thought this was going to be a harken back to the, the whole toads and the frogs and the whole creatures. I thought he was literally going to force choke him, like, not... not Dark side force him, but like force used to lift him in the air, tilt his head back, open the gullet. <laughs> I thought that's what they're gonna do. It went with something a little bit more adorable. That great, that ruined. All right, what's next? <laughs> next up is Steven. I thought this was a solid first episode. I just didn't like Mando suddenly leaving Navarro alone with those pirates and that giant ship looming. That will be an issue going forward, obviously. Yeah, I mean. Again, if, if you and I are all sitting at home and we're a bunch of blip for idiots and we knew full well, well, as soon as he gets into orbit, there's good these space pirates that we're waiting for. Like, if we could figure that out, grief should have known the moment he let the one guy go that that's exactly what was going to happen or something worse. And Mando clearly would have been, all right, we're leaving orbit now, but, you know, we got to stay alert because uh, we did let those pirates go, and there's going to be more of them around here somewhere. So that, that was a little bit of an odd thing, but it did result in a really fun space battle, something we don't get a lot of in Mandalorian. Um, so it resulted in some pretty fun. We get introduced to uh, a sub-antagonist, this Dread Pirate Roberts uh, uh, pirate guy who's definitely going to come back to play a role moving on. So it, it did serve a purpose, but I wish they had just oh, made dear. Din and Grief a I shall get in trouble it. for this. All right, what's next? From Bert, showdown at Bar Turn School was peak Western. Yeah, it really was. It was classic Western. And listen, John Favreau has never been shy about throwing in these really great homages to classic Western tropes. And we see a lot of that in. And, and by the way, the whole quest subquest thing is a part of the Western trope as well. So, yeah, that was peak, peak, peak Western right there. You're 100% right about that. All right, what's next? Next up is Cody Carroll. Thanks to this show, my wife finally likes Star Wars. Nice. I've tried for eight years to get her to like it. She has now watched all of the movies. There is so the. Oh, <laughs> I listen episode one of The Mandalorian converted a lot of people to being Star Wars fans that had not normally been Star Wars fans. And that includes, like, my freaking sister-in-law, Ray Nan's sister. Not like her husband, my brother-in-law, who is also a Canadian, Mom, by the way. Sometimes so help uh, a big Star Wars fan. But, you know, Olive... I don't know if you know, don't know if you knew this, Ray. Are you She's all, all right? about that baby. Don't Yoda. you know who I am? Oh, she is. Shinobi and Oak. Loves baby the girl Yoda. whom everyone at and school hates for no reason. a lot of people, especially back when the first season was out. It was like, yeah, no, no, no. Like, listen, I'm sorry, the, the other students of baby Yoda started me. getting out That's online. kind of you. That, that created a whole I suppose there are a few decent souls here. I wanted to make some new friends, and so I brought my collection down to the common room. My gobstone collection, that is. Anything else, Star I was hoping someone would want it, to play. Green, I'm thing. familiar that, with gobstones, they, uh, little balls, like marbles, green thing round game. And if you lose, they money. spray you with a foul-smelling liquid. Money. And it's adorable. Baby Yoda is adorable. And by the way, the whole mystery surrounding his origins, how did he get out of the Jedi Temple? Gobstones. He's not just a cute Sounds like a fun challenge. Design. There's That's actually what I tried a lot to of tell everyone. <laughs> People can be so Maybe cruel. And, and just so because they're just, sprayed all over oh, the snowy gobstones. It's their own fault for losing. All right, what's next? 
All right, next up is Daniel Bakura. Is one of the worst I like the episode, but I didn't love it. Story it fell short well. where it and now those 31 and a half minutes taken my gobstones and hit them in very credits. high places all over the school. That just isn't great. And you know, listen, uh, I... Rather an overreaction I've always thought the episodes were too short. Anyway, that anyway. said. I can't we work out how to get them back on my own. I don't think I know the necessary spells yet. I need someone, to open, right? perhaps a selfless like and talented fifth year to help adjust to it. You kind of know when to expect the episode to end. My problem, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, was that I've become accustomed now to sitting do. down and watching Pedro I'd appreciate Pascal the help. The last of us. If you do find all of my gobstones, do come and see me again. Up, Disney, I'll be back to playing Snake Pit and episodes. Jackstone by myself in no time. Of a show. And so go. Really hard shifting gears without hitting the clutch to go right back into Mandalorian length episodes. That I, I'm going to admit, it was very, very jarring to me. It was very, very jarring to me. But again, after we watch a few episodes of it, I'm sure our internal clocks. But again, yeah, I, I do think it's too short. And make these. If you're going to make these shows, make them, make them weekly event television. Weekly event television is not 28 minutes. Um, so I would love to see, I, at, at this point, they're in season three. They're never going to change it. But a fan, I would love it if they did. All right, what's next? All right, next up is Raymond Verada. Apollo Creed and Adonis Creed on the same week. Yeah, it's actually pretty funny watching Creed 3 and then coming in and watching Apollo doing that next thing. By the way, side note, watching Creed 3... Uh, total, total side note. One of the things me and Ray were talking about was, man, the, the absence of Sylvester Stallone was really noticeable in that movie. Like, it was, it was really, especially in a couple of scenes. And then yesterday before Mandalorian, Ann and I rewatched uh, Creed's 1 and 2. And that just made Sylvester Stallone's absence from 3 even that more obvious. Uh, anyway, total side note there, but yeah, Apollo Creed. All right, what's next? All right, next up is Mickey Bell. Solid episode. Love the Rebels. Reference with the Space Whale. So I'd better keep an eye on high places around the school for Zenobia's gobstones. Oops. There you go. It's not critical. It's not critical at all. They did not... For them to go into Ahsoka, they did not need to have the space whales there in hyperspace. They didn't need it. It, it what? Listen, it was a reminder. And to be honest, Rebellion. if these freaking space fish are going to be... John, whales aren't fish. I know. But if these freaking space fish are going to be a part of the story in Ahsoka, then it's not a terrible idea to remind everybody about them while they're in hyperspace. And listen, maybe they will or won't come into play in this season of Mandalorian. They won't, won't have to wait for Ahsoka. But, um, but yeah, but it, it was not, it was not essential. Let, let's be clear about that. It was not essential. All right, what's next? All right, up next is Daniel Bakra. The Mandalorians really need to watch Starship Rebellion. and learn how to throw the bomb in the monster's mouth. Just <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, listen. I let a lot of that pass because the action sequence was great. But yeah, I was thinking the same thing. This is reading can be as magical as any spell. Why with a mouth see? that is taller than three houses stacked on top of each other. Oh, oh, that's one of Zenobia's gobstones. I hardly see what all the Gullet? fuss is about. Or like, <laughs> like where, yeah. Why didn't they do that? That I've seen up. I'm still trying to... Uh, I'll just come back to that later. Other shows do that. That always seems to work. But, but no, let's take our grenades. Where should we put it? In his mouth? Nah. Up at Sanus? Nah. <laughs> let's put it on his hard exterior <laughs> shell. On his hard scale. Yeah, that's the best idea. Anyway, all right, what's next? Alright, next up is Aiden Foley. I'd better keep an eye on high places around the school for Zenobia's she puts down Din for the creation of Death Watch when she literally started the entire cult. What's this girl on about? Listen, I don't know how they're going to go 
into because look, this thing was clearly a cult, right? At least that's the way it's viewed on on with the rest of the Mandalorians. What they haven't done a good job in this show yet is really defining. Like, is this cult a two percent of the Mandalorian population joined this cult, or is this cult like forty percent of the Mandalorian remnant? I mean, that's the kind of thing to see if they address as we move a little bit forward in there. Uh, as far as how much of a role she had to play in that becoming a thing, I don't really know. They haven't been clear about that, but I'm sure they'll probably get into that a little bit more as the episodes progress. All right, what's next? All right, next up is Bert. This is crazy. I just looked this up. This is true. Joseph Shirley scores Mando and Creed three in the same week. Is is it not? Uh, um, what's Gorgonson's first name? Uh, Ludwig. Yes, is 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 Ludwig. Gorgonson not composing season three of Mandalorian? I believe he is. And then on IMDb, Joseph Shirley is also uh, listed as a score programmer, additional music, and then for Creed three, uh, the composer. Well, considering Ludwig did the original Creed and did Mandalorian, he maybe he's is he some kind of a acolyte of Ludwig Gordonson? Is he kind of like an apostle of his? Or you know what? People in the live chat are saying that Ludwig did not return. For this season, I mean, obviously he didn't. If this other yeah. guy was listed as a composer, obviously. So I wonder though, since both Creed and Mandalorian were Ludwig Gordon's uh, Gordon work, I wonder if he is like an apprentice of Ludwig's. I, I, I have, I, I have no idea. I'm just kind of speculating since they're both connected. Interesting. All right. What? Yeah, I'll see it eventually. What's next? Alright, next up, Magnus Veratis uh, sends in a $5 super yeah. chat. Thank Just you, Magnus. Supportive. Thank you so much. Then we have uh, Murtaranta. Sorry if I butchered your name. Bo Katan's Planet. Uh, Kalevala. Oh my gosh, I'm doing great with this one. Hey, Joe. The same name as the Finnish National. What are we watching? Oh, I'm just watching, uh, I'm watching, uh, John Campia's spoiler discussion of Mandalorian. Anything interesting? <laughs> well, he's not a fan of the uh, space whales from Rebels being in there. <laughs> That's right, he wasn't a fan of Rebels. Well, he liked Rebels, but he just... He just wasn't a fan of... I don't know. He didn't like I Clone Wars. He, 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 thought Re he, he, he liked Rebels. He, he thought Rebels was okay, but it just... Oh, I never listened to that clip from the Mario thing. What was it about, Jake? <laughs> that I was gonna be upset about. Well, he uh. <laughs> Should I tell him, Austin? He literally said, "No more of this." No, no more of this rocky nonsense. <laughs> Why is there no more of this rocky, this rocky nonsense? Well, he, he, he oh, uh, it's a lot. Like his kids. Well, with how much you love Creed, I wasn't logged into. With how much you love Creed, I thought you would. Here's the thing, okay? Creed three is the best movie that's come out this year, which based on based on that the other movies that have come out, it's only been this is only the third month of the year. So, Creed three, and at the top right now. But March is stacked with other great expected movies. School for Zenobia's Yeah. Off on another adventure. And I'll be shocked with how with how much um goodness is packed into John Wick three. I'll be surprised if or not John Wick three, John Wick four. I'll be surprised if John Wick four isn't in my top three, if not my second or third of the year by the end of the year, because 
What we know about John Wick 4 so far, Jake, it's sounding pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh, download. What's it mean, download? Why is it doing that? That's the last of Zenobia's gobstones. Says on, why not? Says you're not connected to Injustice server sign in again later. Alright, let's see what else he has to say about. I'm just what curious why he's doing that. What have you been doing, Austin? We're both playing Hogwarts. Are oh, you guys are both playing Hogwarts? Yeah. I'm getting out pretty soon though, because I've been streaming for almost four, four hours. I'm gonna restart this and see what's going on with this. It's okay, I'm working on my Mandalorian and a Bad Batch review, but I wanted to come say hi to you first and then I'm gonna make my reviews. I just finished my Creed 3 review. I gotta upload that tomorrow when I review all of them. Better than 1 and 2. You think, you think it's the best movie of the year so far? It is, dude. Here's the thing, Austin. I don't know why it's doing that. We'll figure that out the later. The only thing I can think of is I added, um... Um... AJ's account. But we're on my account. Why would it... I don't know why it would be doing that. That's the only thing that has changed with PS5 lately. Why would it be, why would it be doing that if you... That doesn't say... That just wouldn't make any sense. And you have Destiny on here, all the games are on here. I'll play a match while I wait until I'm talking to Jake. Wait, hold on, I'm not, I missed that question. Yeah, Austin, in terms of, um, in terms of the movie, what, what do you, uh, what do you expect from a, from a great movie, Austin? Then you get that for sure. Um, are you a um, are you an anime fan? What are some of your favorite animes? What? Okay, I think I just needed to relog. Okay, now it's working. Yeah, you, you like Attack on Titan? Joe told me that you get anime vibes in the final battle of this movie. So basically, Austin, here's what I'll tell you, okay? Um, I this I can tell you for sure. I gotta find someone else to fight. Oh, uh, kickbox would be nice, actually. So we did a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy last time. Um, so basically, Austin, Michael B. Jordan, this is his directorial debut. This is not done by... By Ryan Cooper. You guys want to know a controversial take I have? Mm. You want to know something awesome? Because I know you didn't like Black Panther. Of course, they are yours after all. I think Ryan Coogler is—he's not the worst director, but I think he's overhyped as a director. You know what I mean? Like people thought. He did such a good job directing Black sure Panther, but Black Panther was... The trouble for getting there was good moments in it, but it wasn't a great Isn't movie, 100%. And, we'll so and yeah. I might be the only one that has this opinion, Which but I've seen it? so much praise for Black yeah. Panther 2, but I cannot. No. Yeah, I don't sorry. love that movie. No. Like, no. I just don't... ...debut. I'm gonna say something, a hot take that you guys won't understand until you see the movie. In the one movie that Michael B. Jordan has directed, being Creed 3 over the two Creeds that that Ryan, Ryan Coogler directed, yep. I believe that Michael B. Jordan should be directing MCU movies instead of Ryan Coogler. And, wow. and he learned and he learned from from Ryan Coogler, which is saying something, but he's different enough. He understands that new things need to be fresh. Cause here's the thing I that you need to know, Austin, okay? So Creed 1 and 2. Still following in the footsteps of the Rocky movies. Punches, combos, uppercuts. We've all seen it before. We know how it goes, right? Like, all the fight scenes are pretty... The only thing that's changed is they've gotten better because of camera angles and, and effects, right? 
like the way the way lighting is done, everything. Well, here's the difference with Creed 3 versus Creed 1 and 2. Michael B. Jordan, similar to um similar to the great um the great words of um Martin Luther King. He said, I have a dream. And what he had a dream of was he wants so badly to be a part of anime. He loves anime. If you watch Black Panther, he's obsessed with um his entire outfit as Killmonger was based off his favorite character, Vegeta from Dragon Ball. I don't know if you knew that, Austin. Did you know that? It's yeah, so because he loves anime so much, when he got to direct Creed 3, he wanted to make sure that the final fight of this movie was so different than any other final fight of this franchise, not just Rocky, but the previous two Creeds as well. So, he took inspiration from My Hero, Naruto, and Dragon Ball. And there was two other anime movies. So, I don't want to spoil it, but in the final fight between Jonathan Majors and Michael B. Jordan that you see in the trailer, right? There is times in the fight because these are two brothers, right? There's a point in the fight. Did you, did you ever watch Naruto? Okay, so Naruto and Sasuke in, in, in Naruto are like, they're rivals, but they're brothers, right? Yeah, so in the in, there's a point in one point during the fight where they are both such good fighters that they hit each other at the same time, but it like collides them and they both fall back at the same time, which is very, well, they're not actual brothers. But their their story they're, based on the trailers close. is they're so close they act like brothers, right? So they're rivals, and so well, they yeah, have like yeah. so like when they're fighting, they're like they have moments where they're both such strong fighters that they just are like clashing and then colliding with each other. There's moments where like the lighting changes. So like what one of the things that's the awesome that a fight, you know what a lot of people say they want to see in a fight scene, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, people like when a fight scene tells a story, right? Mm -hmm. Well, since Jonathan Major's character spent his life in prison, they wanted to make everything feel so, so different, so that, and so the fight scenes tell a story. There's a moment in the fight where Michael B. Jordan is fighting him, and they're fighting in, like, you know, your typical UFC boxing match ring, right? But at one point, the ring transforms into a jail to resemble that he's fighting someone who had a different life. Because, you know, the story is about Adonis and an Anderson Dame, Jonathan Major's character. And so, basically, I won't tell you why the, these two have this beef or whatever, but basically, the two guys, they had... They're, Jonathan Majors is mad at Michael B. Jordan because, long story short, they... He did time for him. Exactly. And that's why he says in the trailer, you know, try spending your life... Your entire life in the cell, uh, and basically, so there's lighting changes. So there's moments where, like, sometimes the ring will turn green, or like you'll see a jail cell resemble because they're trying to tell a story through the fight scene. But the fight's so executed, like you have not seen. Like I think Trevor's gonna literally, because he loves anime. I think he's gonna fucking cream his seat, his seat on on Sunday when I take him, like. But I think he's gonna literally like. Oh my god, the, the way you like, just worded that. The way you just you think, worded it. I mean, you think, I, you think I'm wrong? Like, are you, are you kidding me? Like. I mean, come on, man. The way you, you just worded been, that. Dude, I did it on purpose. Dude, you should have been with when, when, when me and Ella took him to Dragon Ball. Ella fell asleep for Dragon Ball because she was super tired. And Trevor was like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, God. Dragon Ball was, 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 like, like, he loves Dragon Ball, man. He loves that shit. He loves that anime. Which reminds me, I gotta talk to Trevor tomorrow, honey, but, um, they're playing a new Demon Slayer movie at the theater. I got more information about it today. It's a brand new one that continues the story. So I think, depending on what time Trevor wants to go to the movie, I, I think I might go see, uh, See my hero, not my hero, uh, Demon Slayer first. What, what'd you say?
I want to go see it. Because I want to go see it for me. But wasn't I supposed to be going to You can, yes. I'm saying that I might go see you. So you know, we can only, using our employee pass, we can only see one one movie per day. But since Trevor's going to buy tickets for Creed, I might go before we see Creed. And you can come with me if you want, if you're feeling double feature. Um, and I'm going to go see Demon Slayer. You were invited to come, but I didn't know if you were going to, because walking and stuff for two movies was going to be a little, a little tough for you. But I wanted to for sure go see Demon Slayer because I love that anime and... So, I just thought I was gonna say, you can go if you want. I, I just know you're not crazy about. Yeah, you see me watch it back and forth on TV and stuff, but you never really got invested. You don't know the story. Yeah, I love Demon Slayer. There's a new movie. Yes, there is. And so what happens is some theaters, Jake, don't get those kind of movies. Except for my theater is very exclusive, so we get all the anime movies pretty, pretty often. What do you mean he must be on? I am online. What the fuck are you talking about? Get the fuck off with that shit. This thing is off. It's telling me wow, I'm not so online. Wow, you're, 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 so you're saying my hero is special. <laughs> it is. Uh, my hero is pretty special, but then. But I love Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer is one of my you're favorite good. anime. You're, you're, good. you're good, man. You're yeah, good. my theater is special because AMC gets exclusive yeah, but I'm, things. But, I'm, but what you're saying is my theater is. is Oh, I mean, yours is special, too, for different reasons. But AMC is like... And Austin can back me up on this because he knows this. AMC is like the McDonald's of the movie theaters. No, you don't understand what I mean by that, Metal, because you probably don't have AMCs where you are. But basically, if you Google, a AM, if you Google on AMC on, on your computer right now, you will find AMCs in almost every major city. Every multiple blocks from a each other. AMC, AMC is the largest movie chain in, in, in the world. Yes. So there are literally AMCs everywhere. Yeah, no, Regals are good, but Regals are dying out. Like, there's not very many. But AMCs are, like, everywhere. Like, there are literally AMCs. Like, I even think of, I think there's four in, what is there, four in Minnesota, Austin? I mean, there, I know there's the one in Apple Valley, there's the one in Eden There's the one in Eden Prairie, Prairie. there's uh, the one in Edina. South yep. And then there's Coon Rabbits, Rabbits, um, and there's another one, I'm trying to think. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Even though, I don't know, I think the one in Apple Valley is closing, I'm not 100% It honest. did close. It, it, that one's done. Because it didn't, it wasn't making money anymore. Okay. Unfortunately. I haven't played this game in a while. Who should I play, honey? Who should I try out? What are we feeling? What do we think? Oh, I have only played it once. I could try her again. I haven't tried her in a while. Yeah. It's crazy how long I've been streaming tonight. Damn. You gotta get that Hogwarts Legacy grind. <coughs> Ow. Yeah, I know, it's, it's crazy for sure. Uh, all, speaking of movies, guys, I also just got done watching uh, Operation Fortune. Oh, what did you think? The new I made a review movie. on Letterboxd. It, it, it was pretty decent. Um, I had one issue with it, which was it. the plot is basically the same plot as a, of the unbearable weight of massive talent. Okay. You've seen the trailer, right, Austin? For the new Guy Ritchie movie? You know what I mean by it's the exact Because they're both spy movies trying to uh, be where the bad guy is working with a movie star because he's a fan of the movie star. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. But the action scenes are good. Jason Statham's really good in the movie, and the, and Hugh Grant's really good. It's, it's a Guy Ritchie movie in a nutshell. But the gentlemen in Wrath of Men are better. Like, it's a good, it's probably a good 7.5, 7.1 Guy Ritchie movie. It's not bad. It's pretty fun. The worst movie I've seen of recent besides Blood and Honey is Cocaine Bear, though. Cocaine Bear is, you liked it? 
You weren't bored out of your mind? All the human characters were shit! But the bear was the cameo in the movie. He only, he didn't kill nearly as many people as he should have. You weren't disappointed by that? All the good scenes... You must have been drunk or high. Because because all the good scenes in that movie were in the trailers. And the first trailer. You must not have watched the trailer for Cocaine Bear. That's why. That's why you liked it. Because if you watch the trailer, if you go back and watch it, I'll be watched it. All the good scenes are in the trailer. There are two things I liked in the movie. One, I liked Alden Ehrenreich, aka Young Han Solo, as one of the main characters. I liked his his character. And then two, I liked um, Ice Cube's son's fight scene. You know the one I'm talking about, right, Austin? That was good. I liked that. And I liked in the beginning of the movie when how the cocaine gets to the bear with uh, the dude was doing karate moves and he gets smacked out the plane. <laughs> By the way, Austin, did you stick around for the credits? Because there, there was like a whole bunch of credit scenes. Oh, there credits in cocaine bear? Cocaine yeah, there's, bear there's, there's, there's multiple credit scenes. <laughs> I didn't get to that point to, to, to stick around for that. You will not survive this fight. Were they interesting or were they just all funny comedy bits? I'm surprised you like the cocaine bit, but good for you, man. I guess it's okay to like different things. Defensive maneuver was it? And enough to you know it's a bit like um being on That'll be next week. Uh, I'll see it when I can, but uh, I really want to see it with my Sam and Matt, and they got stolen next weekend, so that's the issue. So you're gonna wait to watch it with them for the first time? Uh, yeah, I want to. <laughs> God damn, Ross. God damn, Austin. Are you gonna watch the new Demon Slayer, Austin? It's supposed to be the continuation from the end of season two. Did you watch season two? If we can't even agree on something amongst us, you never watched the show? You've had, you've had major storylines spoiled for you then. Really? You should watch the show from the beginning. My sister, who's a huge fan of the show, told me I had to watch the show before the movie. You know what I did before I watched that first Demon Slayer movie? I stayed up till fucking 5 a.m. catching up just to... Just to fucking watch the show because I was going to the movie the next day with my sister. Uh, I saw season two... Season two wasn't out when the movie came out, so I watched season two after I saw the movie. And then I saw all... and then I binged season two when it came out. This is the start of season three, yes. One less poacher in the wizarding world. I'm gonna watch it. Hanging out there, there sweetie pie. Level 15, good stuff. damn. You're even watching the gameplay of hers, you can see her. Let me see. Uh, he has a question for you. What do you need to ask her? Oh, she's oh, done, she dude. She, she, she kicked you guys' ass, dude. She's... She's way ahead of you guys. She beat she... it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you'll like it. Austin didn't realize that you finished the game. She loved yep. it, dude. Probably should play a different house eventually. I mean, I play this game again. I'm gonna make like multiple characters.
Yeah, Jake, I've been getting lots of... So, so that Haunted Mansion movie looks interesting, huh? Yeah, dude. I mean, yeah, the the, 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 the it's got a stack cast, man. I mean... It does. If, if I, with the exception of... Uh, um, except for Jared Leto. I, I, I Why do they keep it. giving this fucker more mainstream roles? No, 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 we're talking about removed. Jared Leto. We hate, yeah. we cannot stand Jared Leto. Double that he, bitch. Just because, just because he was in one of the worst Marvel movies. Is that what you call him? It's not a half decent nickname for someone like him. No, yeah, the we, thing with Austin, you're gonna be a big fan of Creed 3 because it's like, well, I wanted to put it in my review, but I decided not to do it. You, you're, are you a fan of uh, Boys in the Hood movies, Austin? It's a... But it's totally like, uh, because of the backstory between Jonathan Majors and, uh, and, and yeah. Of course you are! He's in Broom Quest and now he's horned up, apparently. <laughs> Ella just rolled her eyes at you. I wouldn't understand if it was in the herbology class, but no. He says herbology gets me going too. Is it because of the one teacher? Yeah. Professor Garlic? Yeah, Ella's got a, you got a crush on Professor Garlic too. Damn. Look at <laughs> he says, I better box be growing weeds. <laughs> oh my god. Fucking A. <laughs> oh my god. Austin, what you know if you stick a broom in her? <laughs> And and Madame Kawanga, the broom teacher, he says, he's she says no. She's just about uh, she's just about the herbology teacher. Yeah. Garlic. Fuck it, a, Austin. <laughs> really? He said I need her garlic every day. It's Austin like... wants to put some parmesan on that garlic. <laughs> That's my best one yet. I like that one. Oh my god! <laughs> he said he would go diving for the garlic knots in her pussy. <laughs> now Austin gonna stay up stay up stroking that broom all night. <laughs> Man, this is one of my longest streams I've had in a while. And you think you're gonna be able to be with someone that you can't have sex with, Austin? That's funny. Good luck with that. It's gonna be hard. I think it's gonna be pretty soft, actually, considering nothing will be happening. But you might be hard all the time. You just won't get justice for it. What'd you do? I'm listening. I was listening since point one to point A. Oh, mother. Yep. Parents actually say that to you? Fuck I didn't think your dad had that much of a dirty mind. That's interesting. Fucking. 
somebody broke my record in the broom racing event. Motherfucker. You ready to kick his ass? Or her ass? Somebody, somebody broke my record for the time limit of uh, flying around the Quidditch uh, thing. I gotta Quidditch say, Austin, friends. you and Tra I, I used to think you and Trevor, right, Trevor were probably it. the horniest motherfuckers around. Oh my god! But, but lately, but lately, there's somebody else that has broken that strike that oh, definitely shit. has earned has earned it. Um. Let's just say, as Ella's been trying to find new jobs, oh my god, she no. has gotten very um, joyful. Is the is the best word, <laughs> right, honey? <laughs> Oh my God! Wow! Oh man, you should you should have seen it. It was like it was like Animal Planet the other night. It was like Animal Planet. <laughs> Damn! I'm not wrong. Do you disagree with me? <laughs> oh, we don't we developed a new a new language. Well, you're not gonna see us when we give each other fuck me eyes. <laughs> hey, uh, Austin. Joe made up a GameStop for his YouTube channel now. And I think you're gonna really love it. It's got some techno vibes. Me and Ella have been working on some big stuff. Yeah, what do you say? Mm hmm. My what God! You in, what'd you do in the theater? Wow. Austin, have you gotten any action in the theater lately? I'm guessing not, huh? What was that movie where, um... Wait, oh, oh yeah, uh, oh no, I remember, wasn't it, uh, what is it called? There was a movie where we, that we saw recently, where, where, where someone was making fun of the lead character. It's like, oh yeah, raise your hand if you're, was it a movie or a show? It was a movie or a show we watched, and it's like, someone's like, oh yeah, raise your hand if, 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 you're, if, if you're getting some. Oh, oh, thought so, yeah, no, okay. <laughs> I can't remember that. Oh, what was it? It was something we watched, I swear. was it? Yeah, I can't believe I'll actually see Scream before you, Jake. That's crazy. Yeah, with them having- with my sister and Matt having Stella next weekend. No, I understand. It takes time. Oh, do you have an opportunity for her? Yeah, you didn't miss out on anything much. Yeah? She didn't do it to take care of herself very often. <laughs> I knocked him to the mat across the room! <laughs> Aisha's about to win the All Valley, Jake. Nice. You playing? I, oh, cool she guy. did. She won. I, yeah, I hadn't played it. I hadn't played this game for a while, so I wanted to test my luck in the All Valley. Cause I'm trying. Since we were playing on AJ's console, a lot of my shit has been fucked up. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on with it. Um, cause it was telling me certain games weren't going going online. What do you think's going on with that, honey? Let me try again and see. Maybe try turning the PlayStation off and then turn it back on again. You think so? Okay. Yeah, like a hard reboot. All right, I'll be right back, Jake. Unless you're gonna hop off in like five minutes. Mm. Are you are you hopping off soon or are you still doing okay? Uh, I'm I'm okay. Okay, I'll be right back. I just gonna re reset my console and then I'll be right back. Okay. Give me.
finished watching this. That this is a story the Mandalorian could be served very well with a proper three X. Yeah. I, again, I don't think three X structures is the be all end all. You have to do that and all that kind of stuff. But I, I think this is kind of a show that would benefit from it, Kev. Like I, I hundred percent agree on that. All right, what's next? From Matt Thornton. When this episode mentioned pirate, my first thought was Hondo, but alas, maybe in a future episode. I'm gonna say this. Hondo should never be in anything. <laughs> this is a really annoying character. And the one big drawback of writing... What's the Millennium Falcon? Smuggler's guy? Run. Smuggler's Run. Is the one big drawback of the Smuggler's Run uh, ride at Disneyland. Is that oh, you have nice to just to constantly you, listen to this friend. horrifically annoying character. I, I think Hondo's a terrible character. Just... Just done. I know I pissed a lot of people off in live chat saying that, but Hondo's an awful character. Just awful. Anyway, what's next? Hondo Watch. Hondo right, Watch. Our final super chat of the day comes from Ryan Loner. Too bad Mandalore didn't have a Monty Python to warn them about a sword based system of government. <laughs> oh, so it's him back online. <laughs> there he is. Returned. All right. With only one goal, to save my city. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm going to clean over there. Yep. I had to. I'm sorry. I'm trying to reset all my stuff because it was being weird. What? You have content available? Would you like to... X. I hit X, okay, and then this doesn't show up. Why is it doing that? Go to the downloads. Notifications or just this downloads. one? Downloads. The arrow thing. I'm working on it. That thing. It's installed. That's weird. I don't understand what's going on. Why is it doing that? I can't do anything online for some reason. But why is it? That doesn't make any sense. The internet's working. There's something. Manage game con. And the hard drive should be plugged in. Right? You didn't unplug it? Yeah. Okay, um... That's so weird. I wonder if I'm accidentally logged on to the other... Um, he's, trying get, he's trying to get your attention, honey. Austin. What about it? What do you need? <laughs> He says he lost points for Brave and Claw. Does it matter if you lose points? I don't know. I never experienced it. What if I do? He said you never went off a beaten path. <laughs> Me and I never lost any points. Yeah. No, if you're forgetting to, oh, let me just see something. Okay, this one is. I upload. Dang, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to click something different. I mean, I got on uh the, the I got on one of the teacher's bad sides earlier in the game like i told you about this yeah. earlier austin when you were asking me what did you get a spanking no 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 nothing like that but um so a teacher told me i can only grab one thing from one of the closets and, and what from, did you do? From, 
from his storage room. And then a stern suit. Dude. And then, and then a specific student. You beat student, that before Hogwarts. And then a student asked me uh, if I could go search something else from his office. And I did. And he asked me, and what? he looked at me and said, "Hey, why, why, why'd you grab? Why'd you overbay, over, overbay my rules? I told you you can only grab one thing. You grab this thing for this other person. I'm like, oh, shoot. Castle must have been quite stately in its time. She loved Fallen Order." Survivor. Ready for Survivor. Survivor, yeah. What in the world is going on with this? She stopped playing it, but you can I mean, do it if you want. I stop, mean, stop of course Stop would say it's worth playing. Of course he would. I wonder why it's not working. I mean, I... I, I, I could do online in this mode, but... I knew... Said, but nothing of this has happened until AJ's stuff was. I, mean, I know it's put it put Destiny on the main console, but I might have to Google it and figure out what's going on with it because that should not be doing that. I wonder if they're having issues with the actual gameplay. You think it's an issue with what is it? with injustice? Again? Injustice. I'm not saying it's doing the same thing with UFC. It's saying. Visit EA for to connect to additional information. Unable to connect to EA's. Why do you have three tomorrow? How do you have money for concerts? I thought you didn't have any money. Okay, it looks like I can. It says, "How am I offline?" That's bullshit. You figured something out? Good night, man. What happened? What is it, honey? You might have difficulty launching games, apps, or network features where working to resolve the issue as soon as possible. Thank you for your patience. Oh, so it's a PlayStation issue worldwide. Yeah, PlayStation is What is it gonna get fixed? Um, I don't know, it started. Today. Okay, well, hopefully they get. It's like well, it sucks we can't play Fortnite. There's some stuff I want to look at in there. Incendio. 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 So do you hear anything interesting from John Campion besides his nonsense about... I get why he thinks Mario will be big, but like... Yeah, like... I, I doubt I, it's gonna be the biggest movie this year. Well, I... I... I, I got a feeling it might, though, because just because, like... Just because kids? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that, and... It's just... I, I just got a feeling. Yeah, but... It makes me nervous they're gonna put on another another trailer metal because... Because, uh... Illumination, I know that Nintendo worked on this game, but I don't trust Illumination, That's so... Yeah, but Nintendo works on it, yes, but Illumination is the problem, not Nintendo. Illumination is the one that's making the movie, so they're the ones that fuck up. Which is the problem, because they have bad track record. Do you not remember the Minions movie?
It was Illumination's animated studio that made that. So... You like it? You said you liked it, though. Oh, he did? Can I get... I'm just not doing with a grappler nonsense this time. Yeah, like... I, I like Despicable Me 1 and 2. I wasn't... I didn't love the first Minions movie. And then I didn't love Despicable Me 3. But Minions The Rise of Gru... The Minions Rise of Gru was actually... Yeah, exactly. And... But then last year when Minions Rise of Gru came out, I didn't mind that one. Like, it... it I... I, I I said that in, in my, I think I said in my Letterboxd review, that was the best in the D, in the Despicable Me franchise since Despicable Me 2. That's fair. I mean, I felt like it wasn't anything unique. Like, I didn't feel like it was special. Because I mean, it was like... I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't like Despicable Me 3, and I didn't like the first Minions movie, so... I don't know. I just I have an iffy opinion of an illumination. But I think Mar I think the Mario movie will be will will do well because it is it is being promoted well and I think it will do well. I just I don't necessarily think I would say biggest of the year because I think anybody who says the biggest of the year when there's still a lot of movies that we haven't seen trailers for just sets them up for disappointment. You know what I mean, Jake? Yeah, I understand. Like, there's box office stuff that we haven't, um, that, that, that haven't been predicted yet, or that we don't know yet. Like, with how good the Flash trailer looks, and how much James Gunn and everyone's putting on it, that Flash movie's gonna do a lot of money. Like, it's gonna be busy. Yeah. Hold on, baby, this streaming. Four and a half hours. You can't believe you've been streaming for that long, huh? Yeah, it's crazy. I didn't even hit him. Why is he doing that? Can I hit you with a body shot, please? I've been streaming for two hours. Who's been streaming for two hours? Metal. What are you streaming, Metal? Fortnite? Okay. Did you get any new skins? Shit log, huh? Shit! Yeah, he knows. What do I know about? The new Creed skin. Yeah, I haven't gotten on to Fortnite because the internet, because PlayStation's having issues with the internet right now. Jake, I'm surprised you're able to stream right now. All the internet on PlayStation is down. Hmm. <laughs> It didn't get your stream didn't get cut off because Alice says she found notice about streams going that PlayStation's online isn't working right now. Could be certain systems though. It should affect all PlayStations though, shouldn't it? I mean, it can. Sometimes it did that with uh, Xbox too, where it was certain state stations. It should never be certain. It should be all. No, I got him. Oh, Come scary. on, I had him checked. What are you looking at, sweetie? Anything good?